Hello, everybody. Dead Man Walking 55 here with you again. We are live tonight on a Tuesday night, 9.08. A few minutes late. Uh, you can blame our, our good old friend Windows. If it's not Windows or Apple or somebody else, we're going to blame them. But, hey, we got a great show in store for you tonight. If you love basketball, great place to be. Uh, if you uh, just love sports in general, it's a wonderful time of year with passion and everything else that's involved. But as you know, this is called Sports Weekly with Dad Man. But we're not calling Sports Weekly with Dad Man and Friends our first time as a full panel with some great people that I hope that we can kick this thing going and, and keep it going for however long the fun lasts with us. But first, uh, you know, thank you for your support. Thank you to the people out in the chat. Um, you, we appreciate y'all being here, like the good old Stunning, who's coming out wanting boobs right off the top. And Sci-Fi Mom is telling him not on this show, and he's disappointed. So, hey, feel free. Tweet this out. Bring other people in. Dogs, neighbors, cats, everything else. We are live. Co-host Vic, hello. How are you? It is going well. So, folks, let me introduce, and I'm going to periodically, as we get more people in here, introduce these people more often. Because if you've watched the Sports Weeklies with Dad Man, it's generally been a one-man show. Usually, sometimes I'll pull in a guest from time to time. But what I'm try, trying to do with this show is to get more resources, more brain power, more sports fans in here. One, to help the channel grow. To, two, help the sports show grow. And three, have fun with this. You know, it's hard talking sports all by yourself. So why not? You get company and you get friends that love sports themselves. And even one day, stunning and brave, sir, we plan to talk some hockey. Okay. The official sport of Canada. So, hey. But first, let me go and talk about this. I need to put a tweet out about us being live, but I will do that. But I'm going to put all, each of my guests on the spot. I want to roll them out one at a, one, a time. One, uh, I'm going to bring back the old veteran of this show, the guy that takes pride in beating me two years in a row in college football picking. One, March Madness that we did last year, and continues to love to be here just to show me how much better he is at picking games. And that's why we always say don't. Plant, rely on anything you hear here for gambling purposes or anything else. So, well, let me say this: bring him in. That's the great, the one and the only, the the uh, Pokemon of all Pokemons, the king of Woostock. The scan, uh, Whoopa Troopa. Hey, Whoopa. Hey, that's right. Don't listen to anything that Dad. Oh, wait, what did I do? Sorry, that was the, <laughs> that, that. Listen, I was trying to type over to, to, to put the tweet out, and then all of a sudden, I hit the right keys and hit you. I am sorry. Go ahead, you can say what you say. that feels purposeful. I don't know. <laughs> I was saying, you know, don't listen to anything dad says, dad man says about uh gambling, you, you, you will be wrong. Yes, exactly. Don't do not take do not rely on me for any of your needs for that. We are here having fun, just picking straight up and enjoying talking sports together. But Whoopa, how are you doing? And wow, this is a great time of year, isn't it? With all that's about to start. Oh yeah, got March Madness. We've got uh, baseball seasons about to start. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the playoffs are about to start in NBA and NHL. So it's going to be a good time. XFL. Or UFL, it's about to start. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of sports, a lot of sports. Yeah. NFL yep. draft, fantasy football, the most important thing for me, fantasy football. <laughs> yep. All right. So, hey, always great to have you, Whoopa. Also, I know you love your sports. So, and Emily Gangadine and Sammy the Golden is here. Hello, Emily and Sammy. Good to see y'all tonight. Good to see you tonight. So, let me bring in the next member of this team. That has also appeared for a couple of uh, sports shows here and there, and uh, is needed. It's the one, the only, the captain of Star Trek himself. Go get your other Star Trek buddies to come in here. It's the captain himself, JT Kirk. JT, how are you tonight? Hell, I'm doing well. Thank you. Once I uh, won my battle with uh, the Windows Clan, that was uh, boy. Did it just start doing an update without so asking it, you? It did a big Windows update, and then after that, I rebooted the computer, and all the fans in the desktop were just stuck at 100%. Oh. Um, so I had to do quite a bit of other stuff to get it fixed. 
Um, but I have enough high powered fans in that thing. You would not hear me. You would just hear, you know, like you were riding on the outside of a Boeing 737 Max. Or yeah, cooling fans one of the out. doors blew off. That's what there's, it would sound like. There's supposed to be cooling fans, though, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't yeah. think cooling fans were supposed to be that loud. Well, I've got some high-end fans that can spin pretty darn high. Uh-huh. He's still oh. a jet turbine. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyway, so um, ready to get going on basketball. We yes. I don't think we've talked ba- basketball really that much before since I've been on your show. So yes, um, super excited, but um, right. also excited for the next person on the panel too. Yes, exactly. So thank you as I'm getting this uh, tweet out. But hey, our next guest is, oh, it's, well, let me say hell to uh, your Muslim uncle. He said, hello, your Muslim uncle. I'll explain the format again a little bit. But hey, there is hockey on the horizon. There's hockey, we hope, on the horizon. So your wish shall come true. But listen, this is, I think, a unique, special part addition to this uh stream who says ladies don't know sports who does says ladies don't like sports well we're here to prove you wrong and everybody wrong because i tell you not only does a mrs kick ass when at a hockey you should watch her but this person loves almost every sport i know football chiefs fan uh loves missouri state loves the cardinals and baseball boo go cubs and Whatever else she loves, it's the great, the one, the only Sci-Fi Mombi. Hello, Sci-Fi Mombi. What's up, party people? I love that line you say. I <laughs> love that line because I used to say that to the kids all the time and all that, and I didn't have the guts to say it here on YouTube. But hey, I love that you say it because it's true. Well, What's up, party people? I started party. out saying it on my first podcast. My sister hated it so much, so I stuck with it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's the I love sister. It. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yep. That yes, I love so all cool. sports, including bowling. Yes, I'm I love the weird one. Bowling, right. though, to me, bowling to me, though, is one of those that you play better. I mean, that you play. You know, mm-hmm. some sports are meant to be, you know, hard to watch. Tennis is hard to watch. Golf is hard to watch. You know, those type. But this golf one really, bores me to tears. <laughs> I know, I know. We got to be careful of our friend Lisa. I know there, Lisa loves it. I know. Sorry, Lisa. I've wanted. To, I hope Lisa comes around sometime because I give her a hard time all the time. I keep telling her I want to bring her on to talk golf. Because mm-hmm. we had that one uh, tweet that we put out one day, and we had a nice, you know, you, me, Teague, and Lisa, and I drive the cart, but you know, that didn't go anywhere. So. <laughs> I love that. That was great. Stun- Stunning said he wrecked the whole family the last time they bowled. So, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we do this real quick with this? Uh, you know, before we get too much into what we're doing, uh, I'm going to repeat what this panel, uh, what we've done. Dad, uh, Sports Weekly with Dadman has been a show that has been um, something that has come up and has been there for a long time. And Hungry! Hey, Hungry! Hey, we might talk rugby. If I could ever friggin' find a way to watch rugby or Australian football, you got it. And yes, Stunning, we know you're the super uncle. But this this show started off as just like a solo show. I'd come in, read some news stories, you know, and things like that. And then eventually I brought Whoop in sometimes. And then, you know, on a weekly, on a regular football, college football shows and did that. But this was supposed to be a, a standalone loan throughout the year type show. Well, you know, realizing that it, company's better and it gets more resources to talk more things you know each one of y'all i've had experience with not so much with too much sports with you sci-fi except for the nfl playoffs but i figured i'd bring you guys on um to help and you know we can have fun every, you know from week to week as mm-hmm. we can so what i'd like to do is for everybody that's out here watching um and we'll start with whoopa whoopa tell us about the sports you like because because what i wanted uh Let's see. Oh, you answered this question though already. But uh, he asked for your hockey team. We but start. Tell us about the f- sports you really like and what some of your favorite teams are. And then JT Kirk and then Sci-Fi Mombi. And you can keep it brief because so, we got a lot to cover. Uh, I really like this new. There's this Russian basketball league I just saw where there's one player uh, on the field. I don't know if the what field? It's a court. There's one player on the court who is the designated. Uh, wrestler and see, Russian basketball, yes. And you don't have to tell you don't have to report in 
as the designated wrestler. The other team doesn't know who the wrestler is. But before what? you wrestle down an opponent, you have to take your shirt off. And that's how you mark in as an eligible wrestler. And then you can just grab the guy with the ball and throw him on the ground. And I Holy think that's, that's, that's a basketball. basketball. Yeah, that's a foul if I've ever seen one. That's legal though, so it's Is fine. It, oh are God. there YouTube videos out there about this or something? I just saw it on Twitter, and I've decided this is my like. I don't know if you saw that German ice football game. I was like, I don't think it can get better than this league. And then I saw this, I'm like, oh, it just got better. So that's my favorite sport right now. I don't know the teams. So I don't have a favorite team yet, but that's my favorite sport. So oh my like gosh, the, the new... predictions of basketball are coming true. So you like <laughs> the new and obscure things then, right? I do love obscure sports. Obscure sports are my favorite sports. Uh, chess boxing is another favorite of mine. Yes. Uh, but for traditional sports, I like uh, football. I like mm -hmm. fantasy football. I like college football. I like UFL. Basically any kind of football besides the Pro Bowl. That doesn't count. Right. Uh, um, yeah, it's not been football for 20 years now. Yeah. I love baseball. I love hockey. I like college basketball. I don't really watch the NBA. Um, mm -hmm. I watch some soccer here and there. So I, I, I would say I'm fairly well-rounded, even if I don't okay. watch as many games because I can never find out which station they're actually on. <laughs> but uh, I love the Cardinals, of course, the correct mm -hmm. team to root for. Definitely not no one from Chicago. That would be dumb. Uh, <laughs> I like, I actually like the. Uh, who's my favorite? I don't really have a favorite football team. I like the. I actually like the Pittsburgh Penguins a lot. They kind of mm. suck right now, but I like them. Yeah. Um. Soccer, MLS, the Saint, the Saint Louis City SC. Yeah. I like but, the way all the American teams now start throwing FC in their, their names. Yeah, well, this right. SC because yeah. soccer's cooler. Exactly. But all right, yeah. that's a good list. So JT, what about you? Where do you where where do you fall in the sports and some of the teams that you like to follow? Let's see here. Well, gosh, I'm a huge Michigan State. Any team they have kind of a fan and then mm. also a big Detroit uh, Detroit sports fan except for baseball um I really don't care about the Tigers really? so yeah you know um it's just baseball in general mm -hmm. it is kind of but um yeah Lions fan uh, Red Wings fan um the Pistons really aren't an NBA team <laughs> they haven't been in 20 years so yeah. um you know, but um, yeah, grew up playing soccer, football, basketball, um, mm -hmm. indoor soccer, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. So um, okay. love it as a former player, um, love playing the video games of it, love watching it on TV, love going to the games. All right. Uh, yeah, sports video games. I also like yeah. Baylor. I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Baylor, yeah, <laughs> big bear fan. Speaking of bears... bears Speaking of Bears, what about the Missouri State Bears? And hello, Corey Cochran. Good to see you. What yes. about them? No, I'm I got the t nickname right. Yes, I. Yes, the Bears. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Go ahead, JT. Sorry. Yeah, and I also am a big fan of FC Bayern Munich, the uh, German oh, football team. So I know if MMM's listening, he probably is unhappy with me right now but uh tough <laughs> <It's> okay tough <laughs> all right jt i mean sci-fi mommy okay we know you're a big missouri state bear fan but uh for college go bears sports, go, but <laughs> tell us about your your sports background um so being raised a tomboy dad pretty much opened us up to nascar to baseball go cardinals uh Missouri State, football, basketball. We're pretty much known right now for baseball and soccer because that seems to be only two uh, sports that can get anywhere. Um, Mizzou. Uh, I'm not really a Kansas fan. Sorry. Um, you better not be a Kansas fan. No. That's illegal. Jayhawks. <laughs> and my sister-in-law lives there, so that's a problem. Okay. Um <laughs> 
of course, Kansas City Chiefs because my Rams decided to, you know, go to Cali. Okay. Um, I gotta get, can I ask a quick question right there, right there? Okay. Yeah. Because you're a Kansas City Chiefs fan, but you go to the other wrong side of the state for St. Louis for baseball. Why are you not a Kansas City Royal fan? Oh, uh, because the Cardinals are my dad's favorite team. So they're my uh, favorite team. I mean, Paul, I, root for the, I got don't get you. Me wrong. I root no. for the Royals, and and I rooted for them when they won the World Series. See, the my, few ki years. my kids rebelled against me at an early age. They went to Georgia. That was like, then the one I had as a Florida fan flipped to Georgia, went to school there. So, but hey, sorry. <laughs> but so, if I, so yeah, so that's kind of the Cardinals cool. minor league affiliate also is in Springfield. So yes, they and, are. I go there every summer. That is my hangout. So that's, that's so that's officially that's Cardinals jam. territory. That's my jam. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I cut you off. Yeah. Finish up. And we got eight people watching us now. Thank y'all. Um, hockey. I am a St. Louis Blues fan. Um, now NBA is a little tricky, but I go since we don't have a team in Missouri. I go to Oklahoma City with the Thunder. Hmm. Um, I know they're not doing. Yeah. Don't even. Is get Billy me Donovan still the coach for them? You know, I don't know. I have to look that one up. I, I just like the name and the team. That's all. That's all I know. Right. Isn't that terrible? Standard, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it happens. Um, I'm not a golf fan. Not really a tennis fan. Um, I like the Summer Olympics. I'm glad that's back this year, on mm -hmm. time. Um, Winter Olympics, but yeah, that's about. Um, I was trying to think of. Is it the the Arena League? That's the St. Louis Battle Hawks. Uh, that's no, the NFL UFL now. Battle Hawks. Yeah, yeah, Ta -ta! Battle Hawks. Yeah, we actually just got gonna our kick, own arena team. Gonna kick Michigan's butt in Week One. <laughs> yeah. Now, arena football is different than the <laughs> UFL, though. Yeah. Sci-Fi Mommy. you know you, the arena well, teams we just are got a team. football. Well, we but built they, an arena. We built a city arena here on our fairgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um. And we just got a team. Hold on one second. Because um. the arena type football plays on a shorter field. I can see they use boards. They have, usually they have mm -hmm. nets at times. So it's an indoor football. It's truly, I, the arena football league that used to exist, I called, I knew Ang would love it. It was a combination of hockey, WWE, and football. Because mm -hmm. you had the boards from hockey, you had the football action, of course, and you had usually the loud screaming fire presentations in the game type stadium. Mm -hmm. That's was a combination of it. Yeah, they're called the Ozark Lunkers, and they're an indoor football team, and yes. they're a part of the the TAL. T -A -L. Right. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. You'll you should like it. The only problem is hopefully they have the nets because I tell you indoor football is made much better by the nets. Okay. So all right. Uh, anything else? Mm -mm. Oh, billiards. All right. I like billiards. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, see, see, Hungry Boy throws this comment out here like this, and I'll tell you all in a bit. Damn it, we'll not bring up badminton. Yeah, we will bring up badminton. We will do badminton? obscure sports. Yeah, we'll do obscure sports what? if people want to talk about it. We'll Racket have to ball. see. I love playing Racket Racket ball. Ball. Now, I will say my background, folks, obviously Florida Gators, uh, your Muslim uncle, if you are still out there, I follow the New Jersey Devils. I'm a Chicago Cubs fan. I really have written off the NBA a long time ago because to me, pro basketball is not pro is bat not basketball. College is where it's at for me. Um, and I hate golf, tennis, and all the other crap, gentlemanly sports. So rugby is one that misses I love because when the guy gets his head busted open and he just wraps it in duct tape and goes right back out there, <laughs> that's a sport for the dad man family. So but hey. All right, nice. folks. Shall we get into this week's topic now? Folks, make sure we got seven of y'all here. Make sure y'all hit the like button. Share it out to everybody you know. Tell them that we are. our goal is to make this fun for everybody. Even if you don't like sports, we will make you like sports because we're going to have fun. We're going to laugh and stuff like that. And studying, I would, like I said, your Muslim uncle and studying, we plan to get to hockey at some point. But uh, studying said my good teams were guys, gals I skated with in little leagues for six years. What a team his brother was on at the time. Absolutely. And I look forward to talking to some hockey with you guys that know, know more hockey than I do. So, But tonight we are focused on March Madness of NCAA basketball. 
There are two different tournaments going on. And actually, there's a, there used to be a couple minor ones before the uh, 2020. and But they're so irrelevant, you don't really care about them. The two are the, in, are the National Invitation Tournament, uh, which is like for the people that do not get in the official NCAA Championship Tournament, which is what we call March Madness, the uh, NCAA Men's Division I uh, uh, college football field. So with that being said, we uh, there are brackets that I was I'm going to show something real quick that shows the brackets here uh, of what we have. Give me one second um, as they are. Uh, Whoopa, which order did you go in uh, with your bracket presentation? Oh, which one's I, first? I have I have the whole bracket on here. Do you, do you have it? I, I was going to show it empty first, sort of. Well, I have it empty. Okay, here, well but... then, guess what? We got the man of the hour, the great Whoopa Troopa. You ask, he does it, and let's go ahead, bring it up, and we will share it from there. So, okay. Well, All right. kind of. Oh wait, I got to turn it off. My everything off dark mode so you can read it. Bam. Uh, well, you already going over this, but I got the crew. Yay! Hey, the crew. Yep. <laughs> and so, getting to the bracket. In the bracket. Oh, this is the first four. This game, uh, can you see my? Yeah, can you see my curse? This game up here, it already happened. So Wagner won. They beat Howard. Howard had like three three pointers in the last five uh, five six minutes and missed them all. <laughs> so they lost, which is kind of funny. In the last fourteen seconds, Whoopa, I watched it. Fourteen seconds. It was fourteen seconds. All the three would have tied it and. Everyone were just short, but they got two offensive rebounds, kicked it out, and wow, what a horror. I mean, you could have <laughs> asked for more shots, and they were open shots, too. Now, to me, yep. it's cooler if you call that school Wagner. Sorry. It just, uh, you know, okay. Wagner Good Eagles. German. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So this, the, the Virginia and Colorado State game is going on now. Uh, three minutes in, uh, <laughs> There's two points scored, so that's a yeah. real, that's real a typical nice. Virginia that. game. <laughs> a typical Virginia team game. Maybe oh, if you're lucky, you get to 50 points. Oh my goodness! So that's yep. that's thrilling right there. Uh, then that's you got lovely. Montana State and Grambling State, which I think is Grambling mm -hmm. State's first appearance in the tournament. Yeah, I'll and check. On, I'll check on it. So real quick. Boise I State and Colorado, the basketball oh. powerhouse of Montana State. Yes. Both of these are very, you know, pretty much the best teams. Probably going all the way, whoever wins this yeah. one. And yet, so these are these are interesting games. <laughs> very, uh, I don't know why they added the first four, but they did. So it's here now. I know, because it was like, because eventually it's still not enough teams, you know. Invariably, people quit, as we will see in the NIT uh, what happened in NIT where we have six teams that refuse to go to the NIT. And mm -hmm. we'll talk more about that later because you, you never have enough in that sec, you know, in this case. Yeah. It's his first well, ever trip. Just Virginia it, out. It, it's his first ever trip to division one, big dance. Ooh, after claiming its first SWAC tournament, Southwestern athletic conference tournament, the SWAC. Yeah. I thought they had been there before. But no, I guess not. I guess not. They it's did not. seem kind of familiar, but I noticed it was the last, the first time. No. All right, yep. so we're going. I'm going in like kind of bracket order, I guess you could say. Okay. By the way, we have a tie at two. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> a, is this Big Ten football right now? Uh, yeah, it is Big Ten. <laughs> Big Ten. Ouch. It's Iowa versus Ouch. Kentucky. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've got the East. I, I. I colored all of our respective uh, divisions. So we've got the uh, Big Ten is blue, SEC is yellow. Oh, cool. Big 12 is red. And then we also have the Missouri Valley Conference that is baby blue. Hey, all right. Uh, Corey so, said Iowa out here. Corey, good to see you, Corey. <laughs> so we've got UConn and Stetson, the first round. Stetson has a weird logo. Just want to point that out. Remind me though, with Stetson, I actually saw a game in in Deland once where Jacksonville University went down and played Stetson on a road game. We were checking out schools for my oldest kid. It was a nice little gym, but it was 
it was a riot of a game of the way it ended. It was really crazy. But remind me later, uh, it's the Atlantic Sun Conference, folks. And most of these teams that get in, like at a small conference like Atlantic Sun, they only get in with the winning the conference tournament. And we have a case where we're going to talk about the NIT in a little bit. That I have a prime example of a case when you don't have the conference, the regular season winner winning the conference cha- championship and what it can do uh, uh, going forward with NIT. So, but go ahead, Wupa. Yeah. So, yeah, UConn, Setson, UConn was the number one overall seed uh, in this tournament. You got Florida Ooh. Athletic, <laughs> you got Florida <laughs> Atlantic, and Northwestern FAU went to the uh, Final Four last year, and they mm-hmm. re- pretty much returned their entire team, mm-hmm. I think. So, nope. it'll be interesting. Not looking great for Northwestern, but they're not not a bad team either. Hmm. You've got no, Sandy Florida State. Atlantic. Was it last year? Florida Atlantic was was it last year? Or the year before, Florida Atlantic got really hot, made that it was deep last run. year. Yeah. So, and then speaking of that, last year San Diego State made the finals. Mm-hmm. And they're here at number five with UAB. Right. And then Auburn, the SEC champs, are playing Yale. Who That's... won Who won the Ivy League in a tip, a, ba- a last-second tip in over Brown, who was a, had a losing record, was on the verge of winning the Ivy League tournament championship after knocking off Princeton, who was the best team in the Ivy League. It, it was a record. It, it was like a... Uh, you know, a record upset, you know, for the conference. So uh, I, the right. Ivy League's best team is not in this tournament this year. Yep. So that's what we have on this side. Does anyone have anything here? I'll, we'll get to the predictions. I'm going to go through the bracket and then we can get to the predictions. Right. Predictions that's good way to do it. Well, let, let me finish my other point, though. Uh, it probably is better that, here than later. Uh, uh, but like Stetson and the Atlantic Sun, a few years ago, the Atlantic Sun, uh, the, the while well, the tournament's founded based on conference champions that e- either regular season winner or the winning the tournament get an automatic bid, then they have – All the rest are at-large bids. Well, when you're in a small conference like the Atlantic Sun, you pretty much have to win your conference tournament or be the conference champion to be able to be in the big dance. Well, one year in the Atlantic Sun, um, there's a school called Bellarmine. And what reminds me of Tarleton State, the Texas smoker, I call it everything. I think a Tarleton is like cigarettes, but it's a school in Texas. (laughs) Was this year, they, they were marked as ineligible, where a few years ago, Bellarmine actually won the Atlantic Sun. What it, but they were moving up in divisions, so they were ineligible for postseason play at the NCAA level, which means the Atlantic Sun got screwed out of a representative in the NCAA tournament. You know, so that's that was one of those unique things. So these these small schools have to win to get in, pretty much. Grambling mm-hmm. State is another case like that. But okay, go ahead, Wupa. All right, do you want me to go to the next slide? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so here we have uh, um, on the east, BYU and Duch- is it Duchesne? Duquesne. Duquesne. Duquesne, Duquesne. Yep. yeah. So I the Dukes, Duquesne. I think, yeah. I like to say Duquesne either. Also, I like to <laughs> piss people off. You know, so many of these schools, I like to have funny names for them. You know, instead of Grambling State, Gambling State, you know. All right. Like- I think that's yeah. just Nevada. Yeah. Wagner. Mm-hmm. Did you have something, uh, Sci-Fi Mombi? No, I'm just <laughs> laughing at you know the names and all the stuff because I, yeah. I, I mean I don't know a lot of. I mean, pretty much the only brackets I know is the Midwest, and half the time I'm going, does that school even belong in the Midwest? Uh, you never know. Yeah, well, like this, you have Washington <laughs> State, notably on notably Eastern yeah. School. It's well, weird. They, they, uh, many years ago, they attempted to call it by cities, like the 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 cities that hosted the regionals, like Dallas or Washington and stuff. It mm-hmm. really didn't wasn't really good. Uh, the whole thing with the the uh, the directionals are basically to favor the one seeds are the higher seeds in a bracket because they'll try to keep clean teams closer to home, the better teams closer to home. Yeah. Uh, so you want to win more so you don't get sent out like a, a Florida gets sent to the West. Region. Unless you're Michigan State. 
then they always will send you to the West if you're a high seed. But dude, because... you got Izzo, you know, you know, you guys yeah. can win anything almost with him. So except for the one, the, the one yeah. that counts, yes. then, then, you know, just <laughs> never mind with Duke right. or UNC uh, or Kentucky. They're like, no, I'd rather not. <laughs> anyway, that, that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, no, it is. But basically the whole directional thing is really just kind of something that's there. It's a benefit. Like, uh, you know, the teams that are sort of in that area, because you could say two seed Iowa state in the East, eh, but you know how it, it, mm-hmm. it really doesn't matter mm-hmm. when it comes down to playing it. It's what you really want to do is get the easier bracket. You know, the path is what oh, you yeah. want. You don't care where you play, but but yeah, we got Washington State. We got Drake Bulldogs. Iowa State is the second mm-hmm. seed. The Missouri Valley State. champions. Mm-hmm. You have Moorhead State, notably Moorhead, by the way, not a state. In case you're wondering. Oh, they lost. No, no. Just to be with the Oregon State Beavers. But anyway, that's a running joke that Miss and I have with our hat collection. I hope JT's coming back. Well, but we'll keep going. I know he was dealing with some. Well, he got disconnected, so. Those wonderful uh, tech issues, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, you can't control it sometimes. Yeah. So, this is very. This is. I very... want to say just real quick. JT said this earlier. Uh, you to hungry. You're going to make me laugh at non-sports things. Well, that's our pri- Our our. We <laughs> want to laugh at non-sports things, and we want to make y'all laugh at sports things too. We're here to have fun. So, okay, all right. Here, JT. Not knock. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> Who's there? You are. <laughs> you are who? You are. I. You are Michigan State. Well, it was funny. It said device is not connected to. I saw your private message. Private chat. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was all about. I was all of a sudden backstage. It's like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> See, now this Fun. is creative. This is genius. There's no Agnes Moorhead state for fans of Bewitched. It's a sad. <laughs> well, that's why you then cheer for Moorhead state. This is why I keep telling all the geeks and nerds that say they're not sports. Do they play Quidditch? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, you can find ways to make associations. You know, have fun with it. And you never know, a 14 seed can be the three seed. We've That's had the case of two number 16 seeds that have beat, beaten a number one seed in NCAA history, including uh, once was the Vending uh, Champ Virginia. A 15 seed has won a game in each of the last three tournaments. So. Wow. It is possible. And we have a big scoring fest. Colorado State is up 14 to 9 with about 10 minutes left in the first half. Woo. Point explosion. All right. All right. This, How this are we sitting in the East? Yeah. I want to say this bracket is pretty stacked, I think. You got UConn at number one. Iowa State just won the Big 12. They're at number two. Mm-hmm. Illinois won the Big 10. They're number three. And Auburn won the Big uh, – the big, Southeast. The Big Southeast. SEC. Yes. At, at uh, four. Four conference champions in one bracket like that. Wow. And they then won at, the tournament. That means they're hot coming in. Yep. And at number five and number eight, you have two teams that were in the Final Four last year. So it's like, holy cow, this is this looks yep. like a brutal uh bracket. So. And feel for free, folks, at any time if you have questions and sci-fi maybe too, if you you know, like you said about the directions, feel free mm-hmm. to ask questions and we'll help you along with that. And and anybody out in the chat, feel free with any questions or comments that you have, and we will try to explain it to you. Okay, so, so you know, I know about my conference. And I know about Mizzou's conference, but how many conferences are there? 32. 32? Yes. Yep. Oh, jeez. Yep. Okay. So you have the I know- 32, and then the remaining are take, take, you know, taken from uh, non-conference champions. So, yeah. Because I know about, like, um, Drury, which is one of our universities here. They're in the NAIA. And mm-hmm. then, you know, Missouri State's in Missouri Valley, and Mizzou is in the SEC? No. Which yeah. one? Missouri? Missouri, yeah. Mizzou, SEC. yeah. Y'all can have them back. They don't fit in ours. <laughs> <laughs> Take them in Kentucky while you're at it. I mean, you could have – If we're not really sure if they're still in the SEC for basketball. I mean, they didn't win a game there the whole year. Yeah. They so. – yeah, they they are they haven't been the same in a long time, so yeah. Well, let me, let's see. Um, 
JT's answering hungry. Hungry's asked, there, are there now variants of NFL like three vagrant vari- vagrants variants vagrants of rugby? Of rugby. Yes. I mean, that's yeah. not wrong. Well, <laughs> yes, there's more than three. I think it's a requirement to play. Yeah. Rugby. <laughs> not a challenge as a question, but see, you've got different types of football. You've got the indoor football, like sci fi, my mommy met a smaller field. You got hockey boards, you got nets. Usually you got the little, you know, a smaller field. You've got, uh, a lot more action there. You've also got uh, the UFL, which is a pro league, is starting up in the spring that we'll be talking about, as we Troopa mentioned earlier. And you, you know, last year we had two. So in terms of the professional level, there's only really those two levels that I'm aware of. Uh, the UFL and and there's a number of different indoor football leagues of the other type. So yeah, I think indoor would probably be the only main like variant. Yay. And we're getting a Wade Gaming Raid. Hey, Wade. Hey, Mrs. Thank you. That's everything I've got. I'm kind of regretting here, just looking at this. I should have picked that 15 2 upset. I mean, who wouldn't like the Jack Wabbits? The Wabbits? Yep. I actually saw the the Jack Rabbits play uh, women's softball ones. So. It was interesting. Did they win? No, they got beat by Stetson. So, <laughs> oh, Stet- Stetson, South Dakota State, Elite Eight confirmed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we are the East number two bracket. Are we going to go to the pick- picks in this one first, or are we going to go to another bracket? Oh, I was going to go. We we're going to go through the whole bracket, and then we were going to get All right. To let's picks. go. Let's so go. We got the West. UNC oh, did you want versus- to share the fourth? First four play on playing games again, or oh, we did that earlier. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Never mind. All right, these are the games. Two of the games on the the two games on top are being played tonight. Wagner beat Howard, or Wagner beat Howard, and Virginia and College State are under are underway. So this one in the East, in the East, there's uh, no one in the East, but this there's one's no in one the in West. the East. Okay, all right. So what West, Midwest, and South. All right. Yep, so UNC will be playing Wagner. There you go, JT Kirk. He's uh, for you. <laughs> Mississippi State and Michigan State uh, are t- playing uh, are facing off. So pro tip for everyone, if you just write in this section, if you just put MSU, yeah, you're going to win. Gonna say, just write in MSU, you'll yes, be fine. I, I almost <laughs> did that to mess with you. So. <laughs> but get... Uh, St. Mary's, the Gales, the Grand Canyon. I think they're the mm-hmm. Antelopes. Uh, sure. And Alabama versus Charleston. Last well, let's take up, let's yeah. take a look at is this that, one real quick. But go ahead, JT. Is that Charleston, South Carolina? Yes, Charleston, I South Carolina, so. College of okay. Charleston. Yeah, it used to be called College of Charleston. Uh, it's in the Big South Conference. Um, let's take a look at this one here real quick. Um, because I'm curious, and I meant to do it on the East, but I didn't really see anything that jumped out in the East. We can go back if you think, Whoopa. But without saying who you picked and how we picked, Whoopa will reveal those. This this bracket looks like one that we can have some interesting things. Michigan State, Mississippi State, to me, is a toss-up. You know, between them, I mean, I've seen Mississippi State play. They're very pedestrian. They just got hot a little bit in the conference tournament and, and snuck in. You know, Green Canyon could be an, a challenge to St. Mary's, I think. And, of course, Charleston has had a history of showing up big in some of the conference tournaments. Uh, Alabama is what the leading scoring team in the nation, but they lost to Florida big time twice this the, towards the end of the season. And, you know, I, I, to me, Bama looks like it could be vulnerable, possibly. I mean, do you all see any mm-hmm. matchups in this region that you think could be a potential upset? I, I think all of them could be a potential upset. Um, Obviously, you, except Wagner and uh, UNC. Yeah, I mean, you guess UNC is probably safe, but you never know. <laughs> uh, Anything is possible. We've seen it twice in the last few years, actually. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't mm-hmm. be shocked if any of these get flipped. Well, I'm right. hoping 9 and 8, <laughs> that does happen. Yeah. So. <laughs> For obvious I reasons. Too. I do too, and then I would hope that y'all would beat North Carolina. I'd be cheering for well, you. Anyway. <laughs> so. You can keep your hopes up, but uh, <laughs> yeah. 
What's the? Uh, oh, oh, never mind. Yeah, blue puck. Go ahead. Oh, that was a bad joke. <laughs> we like bad dad jokes here. So what was it? Uh, what was it? Hope in one hand and piss crap, crap in the other. other. <laughs> yep, 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 exactly. <laughs> my dad's favorite saying <laughs> my dad did that too a lot so yeah still does <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome to see which one could get full the fastest yeah oh actually i heard i heard it as <coughs> piss and crap <laughs> so anyway, oh uh, yes yeah so anyway we're good all right the okay. things you hear in a sports show it's locker room <laughs> talk folks <laughs> my kids hear it all the time <laughs> Ready to move on to part two? Yep, sure. Let's go. All right. So we got Clemson and New Mexico. Got mm. Baylor Bears and Colgate. Got the Dayton Flyers and Nevada. And then Arizona and Long Beach State. Very exciting. Do you also uh, same thing in this bracket? Do you see any potentials? I mean, Colgate theoretically could give Baylor a little bit of chance. Baylor sometimes hey, starts slow that. in the tournament. Uh, don't well, say that. The uh, seven ten game could go either way too. Of course, Arizona, you know, Long Beach, but but the game I find of interest is the Clemson New Mexico game. We do have news about Clemson to share with in a little bit, but no. but New Mexico apparently got so hot at the end of the season. The talk was that they actually knocked St. John's out of the NCAA tournament because that they they got hot and earned a berth mm. into the tournament. So, but I mean, look for New Mexico to possibly give Clemson a, a run for the money. And here, do y'all see any interesting matchups? I'd like New Mexico to win just because I think it would make the tournament more interesting. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think Clemson is you know is unbeatable for sure. So I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yep. Arizona likes to choke. So you you know you never know. Yeah, you never know. Speaking of choke, there's one of these games in here. When I see it, I'm gonna have to point out something that happened in the conference tournament. Did you? Did any of y'all get to see watch any much of the conference tournaments? I got to watch one of them. Which or one? I watched the Big Twelve one. That mm -hmm. was blood. I'm, I wonder if I know what you're talking about because I, I I didn't watch this one, but I saw news on it. Yeah, well, well, I think we still have to get there. So that's uh, yeah, yes, we still have to get there. Yes, it's in the Midwest. So, oh gosh, uh, Hungry <laughs> said uh, defeating New Mexico is like def defending defending New Mexico is like defending Perth here in Combat Wombat Land. Okay, we'll take combat that. Wombat that's a good combat. <laughs> Gosh, we got eight people on YouTube hanging out with us. Thank y'all. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe to the button. We're at 604, not 605. I'm too lazy to change that right now. But, hey, hopefully uh, y'all haven't. And, like I said, ask any questions you have, and we will do our best to answer it. All right, we've got 10 people now are watching us. Thank you so much. Share out the stream. Let's bring people. My goal is to make sports interesting for everyone, even the non-sports people. So we'll have fun with this. All right, go ahead, Whoopa. All right. So in the south, we've got Houston and Longwood. We've got Nebraska Giggity. and Texas. <laughs> Nebraska and Texas A and M. We've got Wisconsin and James Madison. And you got Duke and Vermont. Hmm. Aggies. Aggies. <laughs> I spent go. too much time. Sorry, I spent too much time in College Station, Texas. <laughs> oh, uh, my aunt me, and uncle, my aunt and uncle have a business down there. Well, is it a say, bar? That's all let's I say hello to Masters. Welcome Masters. in, Masters. Good to see you tonight. You know, good to see you. No sports. Here I am. Yes, we're going to talk all kinds of sports as we go through this. I'm going to talk about why we're here tonight again a little bit later for you coming in late. Uh, can I can I bash Tex AM? You won't be mad if I do. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> What a bunch of friggin' mutants. You know, <laughs> what I mean, 2020, and everybody had to have a half damn stadium, but these bastards had the damn stadium three quarter full oh. bulls crap. You know, and I'm like, you know, the gator coach at the time complained about it, and everybody turned on him. And I'm like, they're friggin' hugging each other and all. Like, you know, I mean, I'm all, you know, not get down that issue, but it's like they were, and nobody cared about it. Nobody held them accountable for doing what they did, you know, and it's like, 
Ugh. You know, except the Gator coach. So, you know what? It's definitely a world. And what the hell is a cadet, core cadet? It's like a fake military thing. It's like, I don't know. And then they become a dog. But anyway, Texas a <laughs> is one of those that I'm all over the place about. I love to rant on them. Sort of poopus, I think. Spent one term there and got out of there. So, but anyway, College Station. Gotta love it. Yep. Sorry. Oh, and Duke. Gotta love Duke. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, oh, hey, uh, I, I think Masters likes your Alf. Yay. It's coming, but hey, uh, yeah. I mean, how do y'all see this? This, uh, uh, you know, I don't know much about Nebraska. I think Texas A&M probably will win seven. I don't really see any upsets. Well, I, I kind of the game in this area that I think could give something of a of match was again one of the key matchups in any of these regions where you usually see the most upset is a 5-12 game. And Wisconsin was much higher ranked earlier in the season and fell as the season went. Watch for a team like James Madison to come in. If they can get hot, you know, possibly pull an upset here. What do y'all think? Do y'all have any other games of interest in this region or in this part of the bracket? I think it's worth following Duke. I mean, they got swept by UNC. They lost in the first round of the ACC tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, so they could. I mean, I wouldn't expect it, but if there's a team that's vulnerable on this side, it's probably Duke. Hmm. Interesting. I would. Well, I would say Wisconsin might be the most vulnerable here because they're only one game ahead of MSU. And they're, I mean, MSU is a nine, and Wisconsin's a five. I mean, I know the middle, their numbers tend not to be as important, but um, I don't know. They've lost a lot of a lot of away games this year. They're yeah. tied for well, if you if you don't count the fake team that Michigan put out on the court this year, <laughs> they, they tied uh, <laughs> Rutgers for the most number of losses in the Big Ten on the road. <laughs> Who so. just fired their coach, the great Jawan Howard, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, Michigan. Oh, boo -hoo. Boo -hoo. Where? <laughs> Michigan put all their their practice spying into their football program. They didn't they didn't yep. have any budget left for the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So all right, here we go. So we can go ahead to the second part of the South bracket. Uh all right. so we got Texas Tech and NC State. Kentucky and Oakland. I always thought Oakland was in friggin' California. Are they not in California? No, no they're friggin' oh, no, it's Michigan. in uh, Metro Detroit. They um, what? They're in yeah. um. Oakland That's not in the County. south at all. No, they're in Oakland County. Um, they used to be the Michigan State um, Rochester campus. Um, University of Michigan has three campuses. Um. And so this one, Oakland University, has many of the same buildings and street names as the main East Lansing, Michigan State campus. They are actually not a bad team. Um, they'll give Michigan State and Michigan a run for their money. They usually don't win, but, you know, they'll lose by less than 10, keep it real competitive, and then they'll beat up on a lot of the smaller teams in the region. So um, are they going to beat Kentucky? <sighs> really don't think so, but... Um, you know, don't let it melt Bad your face if it happens. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, okay. So you think yeah. that this could be one of those games that may have a little bit of action. Hey, Wade, and thank you for the Wade. It's okay that you're late. <laughs> you always arrive it, just when in time, on time. We got 12 people watching us on sports at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday night. This well, is awesome, folks. Well, yeah. Share out the stream to everybody else. We're just getting started. Yeah, Dad, man, I, I'd say, you know, if you were putting money on this game, which I don't condone gambling, but, you know, if you did, you might sweat for a lot longer than you think. If you're this one. Yeah, if you go Kentucky, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, absolutely. I got gotcha. you. Absolutely. So, all right. Um, and then you will finish the bracket with the Florida Gators. Yeah. Yay! Go Gators! Florida facing the, fairy, the, the uh, furious opponent, the college known with the initials TBD. Yes, exactly. And Wade, no problem. Thanks for having me on your show. You know, you keep working at it. 
you know, you'll get better and you'll figure out stream yards and everything else. So, so do they play the South? Which is the matchup again for the South? Let me see. I think I can, I got it pulled up. Which here. matchup? The first uh, four would be uh, Boise State, Colorado. That's tomorrow night in the late game tomorrow night. Yeah, you know, when I think South, I think Boise State. Yeah. So I don't care. The Gators, I and when I think the Gators could actually advance well in this tournament. Although I don't know, they lost their seven footer with a horrible leg injury in the championship game against Auburn. He didn't contribute a lot offensively, but rebounding was really dominant and stuff. And they have depth on the front line, but they didn't hold up against Auburn. So who knows? Maybe they just couldn't perform well later in the game. I don't know. Maybe they'll be ready for the tournament, but I think this Gator team could actually challenge a few teams and looking at this bracket might be a good draw for them. Yep. Yep. And they've got Marquette here on the Hilltoppers. Yay. And Mr. Angel's here. Mr. Angel, hello. How are you doing? Good to see you tonight. Exactly. Good to see you. So um, any thoughts, you guys? I've talked 13 people. Wow. Thanks. Amazing. I want to talk about why we're here tonight. But you guys, uh, Sci-Fi, Bombi, uh, Whoopa, or JT Kirk, any thoughts about this bracket? We heard what you thought about Oakland. We heard what I thought about Florida. But any possible upsets you see, legitimate upsets, or any uh, any close games that could get interesting, do you think? Uh, I think Texas Tech and NC State is going to be a real good game. Mm-hmm. Um, which NC State ended up winning the ACC tournament when they with a miraculous finish against uh, the comeback against Virginia to force overtime and then won the game in overtime, then cr- beat North Carolina pretty solidly in the championship game. So you talk about Wolfpack team that is coming very hot, Wupa. Good point. And yeah, it's just. Uh... Yeah, they they won five games in five days. NC State, Texas, still a really a pretty good team, but NC State is hot. I think it'll be one of the better matchups of the uh, of the first round here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, JT or Omni, any thoughts? Mm. Go Gators. Hey, thank you, Mommy. Good answer. I was going to say TV. Oh, I know. I've always been a, you know, kind of a Florida State fan, but, you know, been coming around to Florida a little bit in the past few years. But I think TBD could really give them a run for their money. You know, yeah, I've, mystery. I've heard- uh, it, in all serious, Dad, man, no, I, I don't really have any uh, big thoughts on this part of the South bracket. These are teams I, you know, it, unless it's Kentucky or Marquette. I don't really follow them super close. I've, I've heard TBD has this really uh, good player called Future Considerations. He also plays with his brother Cash Considerations. <laughs> you hear about him a lot, but you don't, you know, you don't get to see him in action a lot. They're twins. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all the jokes I got for the night. That's okay. <laughs> No, yeah, you did good there with that. Good job, good job. So, and mm-hmm. I think Miss Martin Muses is hello here. Hello, Miss Martin Muses. I mm-hmm. wish I could sing like her because she's. I've been on her show quite a few times. Uh, just recently, talking about the Battle of Hampton Roads or the Monitor of Merrimack. Great stuff because she sings. I can't do it. I'll leave it to the professionals like you, Miss Martin Muses. Thank you for coming through and saying hello. Before we go into what we think, uh, we've talked. We've completed the South bracket now and the matchups. Well, I want to repeat for people that have come in late, late uh, since the start of the show. Sports Weekly with Dadman has been has been around for a year at least, over a year. It's where I went, and I was going to just read news stories and have discussions with chat and stuff like that. And it's just a one man operation, and occasionally I'd have somebody come on, like Whoopa Troopa, uh, you know, and have you know. But it kind of was a kind of thing that happened. And then it kind of, you know, when we get to college football, we pulled it back. Well, this year I wanted to retweak it because, you know, as I've been on YouTube longer, I'm meeting more and more people. And more and more people do like sports ball out there. And, you know, why not try a show? I mean, to have fun where we can talk about fun 
that what we enjoy about sports, and we can really say what we want to. And so that's why Whoopa Troopa, he's a veteran here. He's been on these this Sports Weeklies. He's been a guest repeatedly on the college football show and kicked my butt in picking. He also, on our mat, like this last year for March Madness, was with me. He won that. And we did a lot of UXFL last year, which is now combined with USFL as the UFL. JT Kirk has been on a number of sports streams and other streams with me too. He loves his sports as well. He loves his music. Mrs. and Miss Martin Muses, you band members, JT Kirk is your musical guy, mm -hmm. booming voice too. And were you in a marching band too, JT? I was, yes. Wow. Not, not in and, college, but in high school. Yes. What, what, and what, I know you play various instruments, but what did you play in the marching band? Uh, trombone. Trombone. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. Yes. Ooh, I so played that, trombone for a year. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'm over uh, six feet tall. So, you know, the arm reach, they're like, oh, my okay. goodness. Oh, I'm, not <laughs> I'm surprised go. you're not a tuba player with that size. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, and Sci Fi Mombi, uh, you know, we, I, you know, Sci Fi likes her sports and I love it. I also love the different opinion, a different perspective. Uh, you know, and you know what? I, I love having people that have a good time. She has a lot of fun, a lot of good time with us here and mm -hmm. you know you know and i'm I the think, orchestra nerd i play yes. violin viola i've been playing oh. for like 35 years wow did you yeah. ever play the marching band no they oh. don't allow violinists in the marching band <laughs> oh man so yeah, the missus the no missus was a policy no, but the band members can come join the orchestra that's wow. so unfair yeah that's no true. i was i was in the drum and bugle corps yeah. um we oh, have wow. we had five scottish um drum and bugle course here in the Springfield high schools for young ladies. And I was uh, Parkview high green and gold. Mm -hmm. Well, you in the chat, how many of you were in a marching band? What instruments did you play? I know the missus was I, a flutist. Did you play in a band too, Whoopa? Yeah, I play. So in the marching band, I was bass drum. Um, oh, I've, nice. I've played flute. I played a uh, bassoon. And I played trombone. Uh, that was in concert band though. Now, see, folks, get your friends and neighbors, dogs, cats, and everybody to come to the stream. This is not your typical sports show. We got marching band. We got musical instruments in this discussion tonight. There's something for everybody. And Sci-Fi Mombi is a great addition to this discussion, too. And you know, a lot of fun. Those are sports. You know, very passionate. So, and they only let me play the bass drum like three times, Whoopa. Uh, parades. It's fun. Uh, I love it's the heavy as all get out. Master oh, yeah, ones we have so. to play. Yeah. And Master yeah. said he was a drummer in the marching band. So all right. So I love I love I love drums. I got to compete mm -hmm. in a I don't know if you guys know what WGO is. We got to be mm -hmm. in that some. It was fun. Uh I played I got to be in a sex tuplet split with another bass drum. That was crazy. It's not a euphemism. Oh, uh, <laughs> it no. We I got to play some crazy stuff. We actually part of our show in WGI was throwing paint at each other. So if you find that video of people throwing paint while carrying cool. drums, they're like oh, Whoop is one of those people. You also narrow it down between like the forty. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. All right. So with that said, we'll move on. Keep mm -hmm, moving mm -hmm. on, you guys. Uh, yep. feel, feel free. Uh, well, JT said he was. Played a concert band on a tour of Germany many years ago. They loved the Sousa and we loved the Prussian marches. Oh, uh, one of the bit famous marches was in the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Yep. And Bavarian mm -hmm. drinking and dancing songs. I will tell you what, also, go back and watch the Mrs. Uh, JT, if you can find the Mrs. Birthday stream for me and put the link in. Uh, Masters and so had some friends from Germany and Austria put in the most lovely, beautiful. March polka video for the missus for her birthday. It was just heartwarming and That's amazing nice to watch. So yeah. make sure you, you know, when JT puts the link yep. out there, I'm on check it. out. I'm on thank it. you. Check out that, check out that stream. Go find that. It was definitely, uh, I think it was a third section of guests, but definitely take a look at that. So, all right, whoop up. Let's get, uh, let's get going on the next bracket. All right. Well, we got Purdue. It's the number one seed here. For Not the chicken reason. company. That could be the chicken company. <laughs> we got Utah State and TCU. Uh, Gonzaga 
and mm-hmm. McNeese. Mm-hmm. And Kansas and Samford. Mm. Now, how do y'all see? Anybody got any thoughts on these matchups? Now, 16 is to be decided tomorrow night in the early game with 16 seeds Montana State and Grambling State. Mm-hmm. So, do y'all, what about these matchups? Does anybody have any thoughts about them? Are there, uh, Only because I know two of them. I'm going to go with, well, I know Purdue too, but um, Gonzaga and Kansas. I'm going to go with those guys. Only because I know Gonzaga is in the Missouri Valley. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, there are a couple things. JT, did you have any thoughts about what we saw in that top half of the Midwest oh, bracket? Could you put it back up? He's got to pull it down for a second. He'll pull it back up when he can. Uh, I will tell you one of the things that I I saw. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. One of the matchups that I saw was number four, the four seed Kansas and the thirteen seed Samford. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bulldogs of Samford are one of those teams that have had such a historic success in the uh, tournament. He they. Actually, I pulled some upsets many years ago. They used to be an Atlantic Sun. They moved up in conferences over the years, and they're a team that can be very, very dangerous. They're they're one of those teams that has the track record of playing the big guys, like you talked about Oakland. You know, they they've actually beaten bigger teams uh, in the NCAA tournament. Kansas comes in limping into the NCAA tournaments with a lot of injuries and lack you know lack of depth. So this is one I think that could be a very good game to watch if you like upsets. Um, McNeese Gonzaga could be of interest, but really Texas, TCU, Utah State has nothing for me. Purdue, has. I just don't see any of the team 16 seeds this year being of the quality to knock off um, the any of the one seeds because we got, we'll have Wagner, Grambling, uh Let's see who else. Let's see. Uh, Longwood and Stetson. And I just don't see any of them having the quality teams to be able to upset a UConn or a Houston or Purdue or even North Carolina. So, but we, um, we have a number of years in a row. Um, when, when things are you, let me see, are you ready? Whoopa or not? Yeah, I'm ready now. Okay. All right. Just making sure. All right. And here we go. And here, like I said, you got, uh, the matchup as a bottom bracket, Kansas and Sanford is what I'm saying too. It could be an interesting game to look look at. So, uh, any thoughts, JT, Sci Fi Mombi, or Whoopa with this part of the bracket? Easy walk for Purdue. Uh, <laughs> I think no one until the winner of Gonzaga, Kansas, <laughs> is going to even really put anything on them. Mm-hmm. The rest of the games don't care honestly like it, it's it's a boring bracket <laughs> so okay I, I understand yeah one thing that I think is interesting is McNeese last year I guess they're McNeese state which is also not a state McNeese is not a state right uh, <laughs> but last year McNeese was 11 and 23. This year they're thirty and three. Mm. So that is quite a turnaround. And they did play, yep. they did play some pretty weak opponents, but they played they beat some fairly decent competition. So it's pretty that's pretty call, uh, crazy that they. I that's a nineteen win swing. That's mm-hmm. crazy. That Pull is off yep. one year. Yep. All right, Sci-Fi, did you have any thoughts with this one? Um, just this Gonzaga bracket? and and Kansas and Purdue. That's about yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. But see, <laughs> you make these is not kidding. The Cowboys, they beat Bible studies. Yeah, they beat some pretty bad. They beat teams. Champ Christian. They beat Laterno. I mean, that's are these high schools? I, they beat a. Uh, hold on, let me let me see if I can find it. Who is it? 
Mississippi uh, University, which I never knew. They beat Mississippi University 92 to 23. How the hell is that possible? <laughs> and they held Mississippi University. Wait, wait. This is, I'm, what the friggin' Hades? I, 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 if I'm reading this right, if I'm reading this correctly, you are. Magnese State won 92 to 23 over and held nine to the opponent to nine points in one half and 14 in the second half. The Mississippi University for women? Yep. 92? What? Yeah, the 23. Wait. But they played the Mississippi University wow. for women. It is a men's Now team. I have to look this up. Oh, okay. Okay. How, how, oh, do my. Have, how do you have men's? That's Florida State University, folks. They're the girls' school in Florida. Traditionally, <laughs> to go back and look at Ooh. it. Yeah, they were. <laughs> Florida State used to be a women's school. <laughs> and then uh, they. That's kind like, of. What? That's kind of like they have. Uh, uh, Baylor had like a woman's school that's now just no special medical school, but yeah, no, but they, it's like yeah. I don't remember why or how that happened. Uh, why they have a uh, why they played Mississippi University for Women and more specifically why the Mississippi University for Women has a men's team. Well. <laughs> because they say they're a co a co-educational public university in Columbus, Mississippi. So I'm wondering if they just kept the name for women, but then they started admitting men. Oh, on their website, they have a whole section here for naming process. In their spirit of quote unquote progress, emphasis added mine. Um, and with the encouragement <laughs> of the deans, the president, blah, 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 they've appointed a task force to take a deeper dive into the issue of the university's name and see if it's now time to recommend a more inclusive name. Well, they say that men have been admitted to the university since 1982. So, so they just never thought, oh, we can just keep it. <laughs> now, so, folks, this is, we're not trying to get political here. We're not trying to get political here. This is just like, it's stunning and shocking that you, I mean, just... It's like, okay, but apparently there was a bill in Mississippi to uh, merge it or to rename it, but they uh, the proposal died. Oh, they, there was a bill to merge it with Mississippi State University that died in, six days ago in the Mississippi State Senate. So it was formerly named, it was formerly named the... Let's see. I, I'm not going to trust Wikipedia on the, this one mm -hmm. uh, because I'm like, I, I got to make sure that that was right. But uh, anyway, so anyway, you yeah. know, but they're co-educational. They do have men and women admitted, but they kept the name, which is and it's interesting. So, all right. Well, that was a nice, <laughs> hungry boy, you talk about squirreling. We just squirreled big time <laughs> on this one. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, it's just like, I mean, but look at the, the whole, I don't know, here, I'm going to bring you down for a second, and I'm going to end up showing this here, this, share Can't this. bring me down today. See, so can hear, here. This is, because I'm a numbers guy. Folks, this is why sports matter, and to geeks and nerds, it is really important. 92 to 23. As you can see up here in this part, let me see if I can blow that up. I can see bit. right when they took out their starters on yeah. that graph. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, well, get down there. Nine points. Do you know how not hard it is to score nine points in 20 minutes? I mean, that what, just. Is, is what I love about gonna... this is two things. Well, three things, really. First of all, uh, Mississippi University for Women point score leader had five. Yeah, assist. They, uh, no one had more than one assist, and still somehow someone had fourteen rebounds, which led the entire game. Hmm. Hey, he got. A, he was really good at getting rebounds. So there's that. So what they just did full court press on him the whole game, so they couldn't even pass. No, I just think I no that the idea. team was that bad. They were seven of 57 percent shooting. They got fifty five shots off. They were barely over fifty percent. 
the free oh, they're shooting. perimeter shooters, Dad man. Come on, look at that. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. At 25 and 55 shots, yeah. They got 22, uh, I got 37 rebounds against 49 uh, heavily out rebound. Oh my gosh. You need to so work on the free throws. You would have thought, thought Mick Neese would have played 14 people in this game. Look, these, these, it's like, geez, you know. <laughs> But like this, these guys played the whole school. This is like a traveling road show. Five, ten, they got 14 players. You don't see this very often, folks. They did wow. finish the they did finish the year uh seven and eighteen. And so uh, I don't know seven what games. Is. Wow. Oh. They're they played, so I know that they're even colored out on ESPN. Yeah. They played uh powerhouses such as Font Bon. Or bon Penn bon? State, Penn State Plus of you. Brandywine, whatever that one is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! See, folks, this is the I type of thing. For you, for you. <laughs> folks, these your non-sports. This is the type of stuff we do to make sports fun. Because if you know, nine points. You know, geez, that's just single digits. Wow. Now, did All the right. University for Women also turn down their NIT invitation? Uh, uh, they actually did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we're too me. good for that tournament. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my God. That's an inside joke, kind of. Yeah. Maybe. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh boy. Uh, yeah, Corey Cochran earlier said, yeah, UK football would still lose to the woman by 20 at least. Uh, but they beat Florida. That's the main thing. Uh, oh, gosh. Okay. All right. Let's get back to the brackets. Let me remove. Let me stop sharing. Let me bring Lupa back up. Sorry for that. That's what we do. We take sidetracks like that. All right. So we're in the second half of the Midwest bracket. Yep. And we've got uh, South Carolina and Oregon. I don't think this is Oregon's official logo, but I found it. and It looks way better than a big O. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you gotta have the duck. And mm -hmm. you've got Creighton and Akron, the Zips. Mm -hmm. You've got Texas. That is their logo. No, not altered whatsoever. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, folks, it's upside down. Hook them horns. Yeah. All you people in Austin. <laughs> um, and then you got Tennessee and the Legends of 2021, St. Peter's Peacocks. Hmm. Yep. So. All right. Any thoughts about that, any thoughts? Run. Whoopa, do you have any point. thoughts in this bracket? Uh. Not really. I guess I mean, Oregon could be interesting because they did win the Pac-12, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, they won I the Pac-12 and they're eleventh. Yeah. Well, that was the whole thing. A lot of a lot of people, quote unquote, stole bids because teams from big conferences had conference champions that people didn't expect. Oregon, NC State, and New Mexico all probably mm -hmm. wouldn't have made it in if they didn't secure the automatic bid. Hmm. All right, interesting. All right, well, folks, uh, number two Tennessee struggled in the SEC conference. The SEC tournament the top three seeds all lost on the first day they played uh um you know so we've got you know that was a bad spot for tennessee the fans up in Nash, uh, knoxville are very concerned south carolina had a much better year of big turnaround under that program face the ducks <clears throat> excuse me but the the story that i wanted to point out here is the number 14 seeded akron zips had one of the most bizarre, heartbreaking endings to any sport, and especially ending of a college basketball game I've ever seen. This type of ending went down to the year with Michigan Wolverines in the national title game when uh, they called timeout with no timeouts, which is a technical foul related, resulting in two free throws, and Michigan lost. Well, in this game, Akron was playing uh, Kent State. Kent State struggled back. They ended up taking the lead on, I think it was two free throws, or they hit a basket. They took a one-point lead. Mm -hmm. 
And when they inbounded with about 10 seconds, and, and when Akron inbounded, one of the Akron play, uh, one of the Kent State players ran and fouled the Akron player, even though Kent State had the lead. Akron goes down, hits both free throws, wins the game. Heartbreaking way to lose a game. That's the drama yeah. this time of year with conference tournaments and things like that. That's why it's, these games matter, and there's so, so much drama here at the end of the year. Wupa, did you end up hearing about how that game ended? Yeah, I saw that one. It was like, oh, you got to feel terrible because you know the guy. I mean, that that did cost them the the a trip to the tournament, and you know that guy's got to feel terrible. Yeah. Exactly. The only other ending that I saw kind of like that was the Egg Bowl when the Mississippi guy went and peed on the field like a dog, and they made the extra oh point 15 yards back, and then they and missed the extra missed point. So, yeah. Yes, and the Frozen Four, I'm not watching, I'm not able to watch hockey right now, but hey, we uh, the Frozen Four, I'm not sure who's in it, but maybe one day we can incorporate some hockey into this, even from the oh, college yeah. level. So, But yes. So, and I think, yeah. All right, uh, so uh, I think we have one more part of this bracket to talk about. No, that's it. After this, we get into the predictions. All right, okay. All right, Any, here we go, the first four predictions tonight. Yes, so one of these is already over, the first one. Uh, Howard versus Wagner. I can't <laughs> stop saying it, Jason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> stuck in your head. Uh, the predictions were we had these. Mommy did not get her prediction in time, so she fails. Uh, well, <laughs> la di da. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, these are the predictions, and why we did win. Busted. Well, you know so. what? Ever since they went to the stupid frozen final, ever since they went to the stupid first four, it's made everything more complicated. Even when it's 64, it's just can you just freaking make the tournament with everybody in it? And quit this play and stuff, but oh well, well. Is, it, is this like new? It's it's been in what the last 10 15 years, it, it's relatively it, it, of the it, history of the tournament, but it's, it's like been around years. a while. It's weird, like I don't remember, I just remember one year like getting a bracket and seeing like these four other matchups. I'm like, huh, oh, what are these? Yeah. It was very confusing, but mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, for I think I did I forget which one I did next. I think it was Montana State and Grambling State. For that one, bam! Everyone but uh JT over here went with Montana State. Had to go with Gambling State. The big G's. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> the big G's. <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, these are really, I mean, at, at this point, these are, you, you actually went real in depth in this game and were like, I really think the center for Montana State could really know. No, I think I looked at for all these, I looked at matchups, and for this, it was just something like, Yeah, I looked at a website and it basically said, Yeah, Grambling State is bad. I'm like, Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> uh, so for Virginia and Colorado State, the game's going on right now. Here, I can. Time. It's not over, but it's uh, Half. at halftime, twenty-seven to fourteen in favor of Colorado State. Uh, Debbie and I picked Colorado State. JT and Mommy picked Virginia, so they're gonna lose. We're gonna win. That's the moral of the story. Probably. The, I don't know why Virginia's <laughs> in the tournament. Not anyway. unless you believe in miracles. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and then, yeah, for Boise State and Colorado, that another even split. It, I wish Boise, Boise, you know what? Boise State needs to make their court bright orange or something to mask <laughs> their, you know, to parallel their uh, football field. Got the blue field and the bright oh. orange court. Oh, God, that sounds like, the, yeah, the football field. Yeah. <laughs> but so I think these, I think the first four is like these four 16 seeds are like they, they were the worst, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And then these four, your 10th seed this year because of all the automatic 
bids, but they're like mm -hmm. the last four um, at large bids. Now, see, so, I would almost like to see these teams get to go into like a loser's bracket with everybody from like the first two days mm -hmm. or first two games um, and just see how they all pan out. I think that would be mildly entertaining. I don't mm -hmm. know, maybe just for me, but well, don't worry. Really yeah, cool. don't worry, Mommy. You're own one like I am already, so <laughs> you got company. I don't feel so bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. Yeah, you, and you I can don't even know who it. these these schools are. So you know, there you I go. Mean, yeah, <laughs> Howard like is um, a traditionally or historically black college in Washington, D.C., if I'm thinking of the right Howard. The well, hello to Godzillion Air. Welcome. I love that avatar, Godzillion Air. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, is Coach Godzillion Prime going to take the, over the Colorado basketball team and lead them to victory? Oh, uh, well, you know, he's he's keeping he's keeping receipts, Godzillion Air. <laughs> I don't know of what, but, he, but he's oh. keeping them. Hey, nice to see you tonight, yeah. Godzillion Air. Welcome in here. Everybody, make sure you've hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We are nine people watching, and we are now getting into our predictions and the first four that we have here, as Wupa has presented it here tonight for us. So, all right. Um, I was going to – I don't know if you want to talk about this now or maybe you should have talked about it after the before this, but you want to talk about the – uh Maybe some of the people who didn't get in. Let's 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 do that after let's do that after we did predictions because JT I know okay. wants to talk about Indiana, but this just mm -hmm. hit at halftime. At halftime, you gotta love the Virginia Cavaliers. The say the first of number one seed ever to lose to a sixteen team at halftime on True TV, Colorado State in this playing game, both tenth rate tenth seed teams. Colorado State 27, University of Virginia 14. They're they're really really in the Virginia is offensive up. explosion here. Like, and then they wonder why they anyway, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All righty. So this is the East going in order. Me to Dad Man to JT. Mombi. I'm not going to do them all at once this time because this is right. more interesting. The first four is kind of like, hey, here you go. <laughs> mm -hmm. So UConn versus Stetson. I picked UConn. No surprise. Dad Man picked also UConn. JT picked UConn. <laughs> and Mommy picked UConn. So, you know. Okay, good. I'm sorry. What team did we pick again? UConn. Yeah. Duh, bears. Mark, 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 Mark with Duh, bears. will be happy. Duh, bears. Duh, bears. So. Virginia can't Valiers. I love that. Uh, yeah. I love that That's avatar, nice by the way. I do too. That's nice. That was a great comment. It's a great one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Right. Anyway. So, so ladies and kaiju eyewear. Yes. No, yeah. The, the chief the kaiju officer chain. of Wupstotska. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so FAU and Northwestern, I'm going with FAU. Dadman's going with FAU. JT's going with FAU. Mommy's going with FAU. So, so far, okay. we're really exciting. I'm sure everyone's and, really You know, that. on that, I really wanted to go Northwestern, and I was like, you know what? I go Big Ten all the time, and I always get burned. This is going to be the one where I get burned because it's eight nine. So mm -hmm. nope, I'm going uh, f you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Michigan right. State used to play Florida Atlantic a bunch in football. So like you know <laughs> in the the paycheck games. So yep. I just used to call them f you anyway. Yep. <laughs> there you go. I like it. All so right. So now we move to the San Diego State UAB, right? Yep. So. For that, I'm picking San Diego State. Dadman's picking UAB. Look at that. Ooh. This is different. Oh, my 12, gosh. Go five upset. Yes, UAB worked their way in, and we shall see how they, uh, you know, 
you know, you got to have a couple upsets. They usually do. And usually the 12 fives are where they, where they, where they go. It's, uh, mm-hmm. that's usually where they end up 23 and 11, fourth in the American, I mean, conference. So, you know, it's, uh, we, we shall see. Yeah. Just a feeling. And JT is also picking UAB. So there's another upset. Yep. Oh, wow. And then Mombi is picking San Diego State. So we're 50 50 on this one. Oh, very cool. And for the 4 13, Auburn and Yale. I've got Auburn. Davan's got Auburn. Uh, JT's got Auburn. Mombi's got the upset here. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. There we go. See, but the, Auburn is a cl- one of those teams that could go in there and lay a big. F- Fat egg, but had had Princeton mm-hmm. won the uh, conference title, I might have picked this for an upset. But from what I saw, Yale and Yale struggling with a overmatched, I mean, with a losing record Brown team, I just I just think Auburn's got too much athletic talent. I wanted to pull, like she said. So, oh, Godzillionaire said, if it's rowing, I'd pick Yale. Rowing. <laughs> yes. So and uh, then Auburn as Yale can go take a long walk and see Mitch shoes off the short. short. <laughs> I think we may all feel that. <laughs> a hungry as an Aussie question, but is there any teams called the Adders or Vipers? The only Vipers I know of is in the UFS UFL last year or the XFL last year. Yep. But I don't remember. I don't know of any. There's got to be other. College. They might be minor league teams. Yeah, I think they'd be in the pro sports, but not. I've not yeah. run across any in the college sports. Uh, there's a G League team that's called the Vipers. Mm, okay. I don't know anything else about that. I'm not seeing anything else besides Vegas. No. Yep. So I think okay. that's all we got. All right. Then going to the second round matchups for this. Uh, I got UConn. Dead Man's got UConn. JT's got UConn. Maui's got UConn. So that's no <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Uh, for the other one over here, we've got some. We've got some uniqueness. Some unique possibilities here. Uh, I'm picking Auburn. Dead Man's mm-hmm. got Auburn. JT's got Auburn. Maui's got Yale. Whoa! Making it to the Sweet Whoa. Sixteen. So wow, got, all right. We got some hey, uniqueness here. You can be bold and it can really pay off. So and we mm. we've had a history of 13 teams and and yes, teams like have. that advancing. And I'm telling Indeed. you, th- this Auburn team is not that great, it's not what it's cracked up to be. I think that they ended up kicking uh being beating Florida in the SEC championship because of the injury to the Florida center. And I think Florida starter, even though he didn't score a lot, was a big factor on rebounding and shot blocking, and they didn't adjust well in the game. I mean, when you lose your a player like that so quickly, and Godzilla in there says it's a bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> right. I hey, you it. know love the love upsets are going to happen. You just got to yeah, try they're... and figure out where they're going to happen. Right, yeah. exactly. So this, you know, you may say sci-fi mom be like, "What's she thinking of?" But you know. I'm not. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm trying to gloat on you here. Yes, pump you up. But, yeah, you know, it happens. We've had 13 seeds make a run before, at least to the Sweet mm-hmm. 16. Usually that's about where it ends, but, you know, it can happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just winning that first game, uh, it could do do a lot, you know. So. And they're mm-hmm. all super smart, so they might, you know, have really good game plan. Who knows? Like For I sure. said, the only problem I had with this game, I wanted to take Yale, but the way they – beat Brown at, in a tip in at the end that uh, had they beaten them going away. I, I think I'd have been okay, but it just did not. I don't know. It just, I, I just couldn't pull the trigger on that upset. Hmm. Okay. All right. So now that's the that's second the side of the of East. East. Okay. Uh, yeah. BYU and uh, the people. D people. The Duke, the Duke what do you mean D people? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so the East, we've got. See, I've got BYU, big the now Big Twelve BYU. 
Dad Man's got BYU. JT's dot got the got the wow. Dukes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then mommy's got BYU. So or I call three. him Dukesny. Like Dukesny. Kenny Dukesny. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I love that pronunciation. Bad country by music the way. joke, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the Illinois and Moorhead State, the great state of Moorhead. Uh, I've got Illinois. Dad Man's got Illinois. Basie's David Duchesne start. David Duchesne <laughs> start <of> X Files. <laughs> Thanks, Godzilla. There. Everyone's got Illinois here. Yeah, for Washington State and Drake. Got yeah, I'm picking the Bulldogs. Where's Josh at, by the way? Boo. No, you you got that. Okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. All right, cool. They didn't make it. They they didn't they're they they're they're the one Josh is the one team that actually accepted the bid into the NIT. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. That <laughs> uh, man's got the the Cougars. JT's got the Cougars. And Mommy's got the Bulldogs. So we got to split here. And Iowa State and South Dakota State. I got Iowa State. Damn man, Iowa State. JT, Iowa State. And Mommy, Iowa State. So we're going this week there. Now, 15 twos have happened, but it's still pretty darn rare. So. Yep. And I feel like this is the – apparently the committee thought that Iowa State was the weakest two seed. I feel like Iowa State was probably – should have been a one seed. So all things considered, I don't think Iowa State is going to make this one. Uh, uh -huh. I, I feel like if there's going to be an upset for two and 15, it's not going to be these guys. Right. But mm -hmm. Here in the east – I'm picking BYU upsetting Illinois over here. Dadman's going with Illinois. JT's going with Illinois. And Mombi's going with Illinois. So I, I stand alone. On my Big 12 hill over here. There you it's go. still weird that they're in Big 12, but mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and then here for the bottom side, I'm picking Iowa State. Uh, Dadman's picking Iowa State. JT's picking Iowa State, and Mombi's got the Missouri Valley Conference getting to the Sweet 16 over here with the Drake. Oh, you're a big fan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dang. Yep. Now, what made you decide that Drake was going to pull something out like that? Well, he's got a new album out, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got two different Drakes in the, the, the bracket now. Yeah. I have no idea if he has a new album well, out or not. I just Godzilla, made that. Godzilla, you're never <laughs> going to reference a Drake song, but he doesn't know any. <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess that Joe Montana is a 2019 legendary version of Gojira. All right. <laughs> So that's the East. We've completed the East bracket. Yep. All right. So, those so we are go to the West. To the Sweet 16 with that. Now we are in the West. All right, Whoopa. This is UNC versus Wagner. I keep trying to figure out weird ways to say it. Actually, I think it's the last time we have to say it. <laughs> but, uh, do you that want a score update? Sure. Colorado 35, Virginia 16. With about 16.20 left, so in three minutes and 40 seconds, UVA has scored one basket. <laughs> Man, they are. How could you watch basketball like that? Dear God. I mean, they won a national the title. Committee I don't was, know how or why, but. The committee was like, we really need that team. You know, we don't need yeah. other, you know, these other exciting yeah. mid-majors. We need Virginia. Ugh, sorry about that, Mobby. That's like, <laughs> Virginia is like watching paint dry. It's just not good. At least, no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> but, yep. Yeah, so I switched up the order, by the way. I'm trying mm -hmm. to make it interesting. Kind okay, of, cool. I don't know if that counts as interesting. So, Dadman's first. Dadman's right, cool. got UNC. JT's got UNC. Mommy's got UNC. And I've got UNC. That's no, no surprise. As much as it pains me. Yeah. Yep. 
All right. So, and then for this one, Dad Man has MSU. JT has MSU. Mobby has MSU. And I have MSU. Uh, Mobby has a different MSU, but we all have MSU. So, no matter See, that's what. That's a game I think she's got a good <laughs> possible. I mean, if Mississippi State comes in, they got hot in the SEC tournament. I wish that they would beat in Auburn. Had they beaten Auburn, I think Florida would have won the conference a time tournament, but yeah, I but that we've got an eight nine. JT does not sound thoroughly con- convinced with this Michigan State team. I uh, you've seen them play no. this year, JT. What are they like? Because I tell you, Michigan State has been one of those up and down teams. They 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 can get hot. They they don't hit a lot from three points, but they can at times. They can hit free throws, but they're just they're one of those blah teams that that it just depends on what not you only get that you run to. I feel like they're running the same offense that is a one. Uh, the natty way back in 2000 with Patine Cleves. You are the second, you are the <laughs> second Michigan State fan that has told me that within the last two years. And and they get no looks. I mean, they must pass the ball to every single person out on the court three times before they take a shot. And then they miss like more than half the time. And they're so out of place because they're mm-hmm. playing this pass the ball around the perimeter game. Mm-hmm. It, it, it don't take a shot. You you better not take a shot, even if you're slightly open, because heavens, you might draw a foul and get to shoot too. Um, it, you know, no one is in for the rebound either. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's tough. It's tough. I mean, Izzo's been there forever. He's done so many great things. But if he were a new coach, I would, uh, you know, people would be looking around with the kind of year that they've had the past few years and this being one of them. Um, I would say that's their two biggest problems. Honestly, I don't think defense is their major problem, um, but they just, they need to run a different style offense and they've needed to do that for years. I feel like any coach out there now that plays them two times a year mm-hmm. just has their playbook. I mean, they don't have to watch tape. They don't have to do anything. They just, Here's their playbook. Let's go play them. So, gotcha. yeah, I, I can, I can understand. They, they've been a bit so you, on the road too. I mean, time, I know the Big Ten is not easy. Well, do but, you think his time is his pet time has passed that they need to start looking to a new coach in the future? Well, his son's on the team. He is getting older. He is starting to slow. I give him another couple years before he's mm-hmm. like ready, ready to be out. Right. Um, but you know and he's it, such a competitive you, guy. He would how do you do treat until, a legend though? You know, but how do I know? It's like Bear Bryant. It's like Bobby Bowden. I mean, when it got ugly, they forced him out. But of course, he had Jimbo Jumbo Fisher behind being a jack wagon as the coach <laughs> of the future. You know that that yep. was done dirty, like the Tom Landry yep. stuff and all. But I mean, you got a legend, and he has done a lot for the program. Hungry said, "Paint dry." Is that a mean legendary version of Godzilla? And he's saying he's trying to back me up, re-equating sports to geek talk stuff. By the way, uh, that's cool. Yeah, but yeah, that's uh Oh yes, Jimbo did wonders for him. Oh wait, yes, and the god awful amount of a buyout he had. We talked about that earlier this year with Culture Casino about how the buyouts of coaches of like six, just six coaches, like uh, almost one hundred fifty million dollars. It's just ridiculous the way money's just flown because it's uh, these uh, fundraising organizations, the direct support organizations and the uh, foundations. You know, that's why a lot of people think they're talking all state funds and government funds. They're not, folks. Uh-uh. It's where they put private money to go in and become a big washing machine. So, <laughs> all right. But that's another topic for another day. So, JT, mm-hmm. thanks for your thoughts on Jen. Uh, t- uh, Izzo, Tom Izzo, because you know I I've yep. wondered about that for a number of years. So, and, you know. and you know the other thing on this, he won't cheat enough to win. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you know he 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 does it two straight lace, so he's never going to win again. Well, it's um, like the coaches that they'd say yeah. that with Auburn I and mean, Clemson, uh, uh, Dabo Sweeney won't use a transfer polder, won't do certain things, and uh-huh. you know, a lot of people are starting to complain because it's a new day and age with the transfer portals. And everything else, it's you know the old yep. style of having. And I think it's sad that we're losing something. But if you want to stay competitive, it is the new reality. Yeah. yeah. The only thing, the only thing Dabo's interested about is yelling at Tyler from Spartanburg. 
<laughs> I love Spartanburg. <laughs> I love Spartanburg. If you ever get into Spar- chance to go to South Carolina, go to uh, Spartanburg. And I love Coach Joe. My words about Go Tigers at every end of it. It's like <laughs> not the buyout, not the amount, but it's response. When do you want me to leave? Hey, if you're not <laughs> wanted, leave. There you go. I'm starting I to wonder if that like, works better with people too, as well as jobs. But hey, man, that's another yeah. issue. I always liked uh, Coach O and the the automated uh, subtitles trying to figure out what he was saying. That was can anybody interpret the guy? <laughs> it kind of reminds you like the boom power type mm-hmm. yeah. yeah he's yeah. just Cajun boom power alright so where do we go where do we go from here St. Mary's Grand Canyon yep so St. Mary's Grand Canyon Dadman's yep. picking St. Mary's yep. JT's picking St. Mary's uh, Mombi's picking St. Mary's. I'm picking the the the, the cantaloupes. I, I uh, yes, I had trouble with this one. Why are you See, going with the cantaloupes? This is the thing. The way cantaloupes the West, or antelopes? You said I think cantaloupes. The antelopes. I antelopes. said the cantaloupes. Well, well, so well, okay, I got you. You threw me. See, the That's West Coast con- West Coast yeah. Conference is like they're they're in like a never ending competition for trying to convince people that they're like important. Yeah, it's like why is St. Mary's good? Well, they beat Gonzaga. Why is Gonzaga good? Well, they beat St. Mary's. It's like okay, well that doesn't like did they beat anyone else? <laughs> like I think St. Mary's beat A and M. That's about it. Like so, it's like I don't think I believe that they're actually good. Yep. So See, I see that's a twelve five that I kind of agree with that I, that I've been wondering because Great Canyon's pretty good for a small school. St. Mary's mm-hmm. is not that. Much of a big school. I, I, I this is one that I hide as a twelve five upset too. You know? It's just sometimes, like you know, West Coast can be good. Like those teams have decent enough recruiting and all that, and sometimes they make runs. It's just this year, like they they, they usually have a week out of conference schedule, and like St. Mary's genuinely just I don't think they beat anyone besides Gonzaga. It's like I, I can't tell what the difference is between, you know, St. Mary's and another one of these small conferences, um, at least for this year. So I, I I don't know. So I've just picked the, the, the cantaloupes. All right. All right. You have it there. Yep. Got another 12-5. So far, we've got two people saying a 12-5 upset. Those are probably the biggest. Ooh. Well, Mobby had 13 4. Sorry, my bad <laughs> on that one. So, with yell. All right. So, now so, we got another 13 4 with Alabama and Charleston. You know, yep. Alabama and Charleston. Deadman's picking Alabama. JT's got Alabama. Mommy's got Alabama. And I've got Alabama. That was painful I, as well. I'd, mm. I'd love to pick Charleston, but I still say, you know. The problem you had to be careful calling upsets because either some years they all are like crazy upsets, and then a lot of years they just go by the book. And I, I just, as much as Alabama is, is the leading scoring team in the nation, but Charleston, you kind of, I mean, could has had a, that track record, like I said earlier, but Alabama's just got a lot of offense. And, and unless Alabama goes very, very cold, this is probably a game that, uh, Bama will outrun the other team enough. Yeah, I mean, I if Charleston last year looked like a pretty good team, and they did, I think they went down to the wire with San Diego, which, as you know, in the first round, which you know they played the final. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, oh, that team, you know, played pretty good this year. I think they lost a lot of their seniors and just aren't. You know, they're still they're still good enough. They won their conference, but you know, last year I think they were like they were a thirty win team in the uh, in the regular season. Right. So I, this year, I think they're more kind of you know lower twenties, which is still good. But I I don't know if it's beat Alabama good. Gotcha. All right. So now we'll go back to the top of the bracket. We got UNC versus the winner of the Michigan uh, State Mississippi State game. Let's see yeah. how this turned out. All right, so Dad Man UNC JT UNC. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Mambi UNC, and I'm taking UNC. So no surprises yep. here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> JT doesn't believe hard enough. That's what I'm getting out of this. <laughs> well, the problem JT is a realist. He's seen his team play enough, and oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when you see them play enough, I see. I like at Florida. I finally saw them this year later in the season, and they're a team. I, I hope that they can turn it. I think before the injury and before the Auburn game, I I thought that they were one of the teams that could make a deep run in the NCAs. Uh, but I think I just can't. I hope that they can recover from that injury because they were like a set, completely different team. They kept fight in the game for a while, but then they just fell away from Auburn near the end. But mm-hmm. I hope that. I hope that Florida can make a run, but you know, you know, Michigan State. He sees it. He doesn't trust it. Go with the person that's watched them all year. Their reaction, their instinct. Hmm. So yeah, this. and UNC just outclasses them <laughs> like mm-hmm. every time they play. I'm like, why are we playing them in the regular season? This is part of the thing that kind of gets me going about the schedule that Izzo wants is he wants to play all these really hard teams to try to get his team ready for the tournament. But then it's like, okay, you could get yourself further in the tournament by not playing Kansas and then UNC and then Duke and Kentucky all in your regular season when you're going to go like one and three on that and then have four wins instead of one and maybe not be a nine seed. But hey, what do I know? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, let's get into this uh, bottom part of the bracket. Most of us think of Alabama, St. Mary's, but we'll just see who shall yeah. advance. So, Dad Man has St. Mary's. JT has St. Mary's. Uh, Mombi has Alabama. Mm-hmm. And I got the cantaloupes. The cantaloupes are going to the there you go. All right. So, so. Wow. There we go. We got some split decisions on that, though. Mm-hmm. Get interesting. So, I saw enough, I, and I, I went to St. Mary's against Alabama only because I've seen Alabama lose twice to Florida, once badly, and then once Florida pulled away near the end. Uh, you know, Alabama's a really hot and cold team that, you know, mm-hmm. I it's they could get hot. They they could I they probably should beat St. Mary's. They should probably advance the Sweet Sixteen, but. You don't know. I know. I just, I don't know. I've seen this team falter at the end of the year. And just a lot of times looking, it comes into how they're playing at the end of the year. Yeah. Just looking at like a lot of their games. I mean, they're, it's weird to look at them and see that they're 13 and five in the SEC. So when you look at them, it's like, who did they really beat? I yeah. wonder if it's just kind of favorable scheduling because, like, they played they they played Tennessee twice and lost both times, and they played Kentucky and lost. They played Arizona and Creighton and Purdue at a conference and they lost. So it's like yeah. I don't think they're that good mm-hmm. in reality. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but yeah. I I don't think they can make it past the first the second round. All right. Hungry is asking uh, who she's in a female rugby or grass hockey. Ardella or Wilma. You got to go with Wilma. Wilma all the time. <laughs> Ardella's good, but no, you got to go Wilma. Anyway, sorry about that distraction. <laughs> all right. So we've completed the West. So oh, Godzilla here says everyone always underestimates Bama. Oh, wait, this isn't football. No. Yep. All right, so let's... West number two. Yep. yep, West number two. Yes. All right. Let's we see have... what surprises are wait here. We have Clemson and New Mexico. This could be an interesting one. Dadman's taking the Lobos. Yes. Uh, JT's taking the Lobos. Hey, JT. Bobby's taking Clemson, and I'm taking Clemson. So we're well, we're a split decision here. Well, you know, Dad, man, this just proves that while we have a tremendous panel here, um, mm-hmm. we know who the two smart ones are. Yes. I'll just say that right now. <laughs> it's me and yes. I, I, I agree exactly <laughs> with you, JT. Well, Mommy, Mommy's, Mommy's smart, too. It's just in this case, she is a little misguided. We need help. I think her. my quarter is the smart one because, I, you know, I flipped it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so fun. But, hey. 
All right. Let's see what we've got now. We've, um, well, we got 15 likes on this. And hey, I got a new sub tonight. We're back to 605. Thank you, whoever the sub was. Ooh, cool. Yeah, the YouTube yeah, gods do that sandwich. up and down, up and down thing. So thank you to whoever did. Subscribe. Yeah, I went through my um, subs today on Teague's stream and I noticed I, I had been unsubscribed from a bunch of people. I had um, somebody that's wanting me to come on a show in April. And they actually said, I saw when they resubbed the other night. I'm like, this person subbed to me before. Mm -hmm. But that's why, mm -hmm. folks, you always, when you sub at a new channel, go and watch them for a bit. I mean, on Twitch, make sure you, uh, if you follow, make sure you have your volume up at 2%. If you low, lurk above that. But make sure you actually stay around and watch some of their content. Because just to leave a like and leave and never come back, I think that's a lot of times when that uh, happens and it changes. So. Let's see. Yeah. I regularly get unsubscribed from ads from Heels versus Babyface mm -hmm. all the time, and I I watch his stuff. You know, I do. who knows what hmm. the damn daggum algorithms <laughs> yeah. are? It just it makes no sense. So, but we're at clubs in New Mexico. I think New Mexico after playing uh, Rick Pitino's uh, uh, St. John's team out of a place. I think they continue hot, and I'm not sold on the a ACC. The ACC ain't what she used to be, and Clemson goes down. So, all right. Then we bring up Baylor and Colgate. Not the toothpaste, folks. It could be the toothpaste. Sorry, I forgot I was reading. <laughs> um, so, Dabin's taking Baylor. Uh, JT's picking Baylor. Mombi's picking Baylor. And I'm, of course, picking Baylor. So, everyone made the correct Yeah, that's, that's not the Colgate brand. I'll tell you that much. That's not no. the Colgate. I've always now, been more of an Aqua Fresh person. Now, myself. I do think that this game could get. I do think that this game could get be a little close at the beginning because I've seen hey. Baylor struggle a lot this year. Mm -hmm. Take but that Bay back, that man. Well, I, I just think I think you're going to be kind of nervous, upset at halftime, but I, I think definitely Baylor pulls away. That's usually now, what we happens. only we only underperform against good teams. That's the problem. It's like okay. if it's like, oh, this team might be okay. That's when we start losing. Nah, I got you. <laughs> but um, what was I doing? That's right. Uh, so for the seven and eight, Dadman's picking Dayton. JT's picking Nevada. Mombi's got Dayton, and I'm picking Nevada. So this was a hard to game to pick. pick between it. Yes. It, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I'm fully <laughs> expecting me to have made the wrong choice, no matter which one I picked. <laughs> Nevada's also had a historical. It's Nevada Reno. They've had also had a history of uh, pulling some upsets in early rounds of the uh, mm -hmm. tournament too. So mm -hmm. don't don't dismiss this game. This could be one of the. This actually could be one of the better games out of this bracket. So mm -hmm. I really just. Nevada was a pretty good mountain. They're Mountain West, right? They're a pretty good Mountain West team from what I remember. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, so. oh, you know, they're an underrated basketball conference. Uh, so I think they could do some damage here. I guess I say do some damage. Seven and ten seeds are usually pretty close. Some toss-ups. So It's hard to consider it an, an upset per se. You know. Yeah. Um, and then we've got down here. I just take Saturday. driving through Dayton, so there's no way I, I, <laughs> I, could, I couldn't. I, I think that's a valid reason. That's very fair. Yeah. Hey, we found you a Waffle House in Toledo, so don't. Oh well, yeah. Too bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, which one was that? That was uh, Nevada. Let's see. So, which conference did you think they were? Nevada is Mountain West, right? Yeah, let me go. Dayton, I have no idea what Dayton is. The Patriot League is Colgate. Um, Mountain West, yes, is Nevada. Yep. Utah State, Nevada, and Boise State. They got three in the tournament. They got three? I thought they were going to get uh, four. Four, San Diego State. Five, New Mexico. They got, they got five, they got six. Six, Colorado State Rams. I that's guess. right. They got the five bid because um, – because uh, New Mexico won. Exactly. Six bid Mountain West. They're doing good. And Waffle House is the goat because sometimes Mrs. and I run after a 
Thing. Oh yeah, Waffle House is great. It's not as I always say, it's not a Waffle House, it's a Waffle Home. As you can clap now. Mm. Was... <laughs> we are under nine minutes. We are under nine minutes left, and Virginia has managed to get up to twenty-nine points. Whoa! So, so they hey, double, they they're trying the output in twelve and eleven minutes. So, let's, but they're still behind. Slow down there, guys. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, what is it? I, forty-seven twenty-nine with about nine minutes left in the game. All right. So, <laughs> still not great for them. But at least they took the lid off the basket. <laughs> All right. Well. So Arizona and Long Beach State. Dadman's taking Arizona. JT's taking Arizona. Mombi's taking Arizona. I'm taking yep. Arizona. Now uh, I know you're I know you're the biggest uh Arizona fan, Dad Man. So I'm wondering mm-hmm. why why did you pick them here instead? I just I, I saw Long Beach. I don't try it just it's, it just doesn't have the feel of a potential number 15 seed to knock off Arizona. Arizona has a, a decent coach. Mm-hmm. That just yeah, historically they've been one of those teams that underperform in the first round, but I just am not there's nothing impressive with this Long Beach team. I just uh I just don't I just, I just don't feel it with this one. It really, it, it more than that is just they. Uh, very, let's see, take a look at this. See, let's turn that. See, Long Beach State. Which one is? Oh my God! In a whack, a whack has UT Rio Grande Valley. Jeez, wow! They, they've really these conferences have really added some teams. So, um, so would that be Mountain West again? Then I guess possibly. No, it wouldn't be Mountain West. I don't know. I, I, Rio Grande Valley? Yeah, like, yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know who that guy is. Ooh, yeah, it's just crazy. Made up, yeah, so. made up I don't know where... I don't know which conference this one is, uh, uh, where they, Long Beach is, but uh, I'll keep looking. But, uh, yeah. Oh, just, it's... Uh, hold on. I remember this because I was fo- I was actually following... I, I followed way too much conference championships. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like it was probably unhealthy. They're in the Big West. Big West, Big West, yeah. And yeah, Long because Beach they've State got the uh, coming in at twenty-one UC, and fourteen. They've got like every single California college that yep. isn't like a big one: UC Irving, UC San Diego, UC Davis, UC Riverside, uh, CSUN. I don't know what that is. UC Santa Barbara. That, that just every it's basically all California colleges, and then Hawaii. But uh, Rio Grande Valley is going to have an awesome soccer team for years to come if you pay attention. Mr. Angel also says YouTubes and X are unsubbing subscriptions at the moment. I hear many complaining got unsubbed from Dunecott and Clobby. Only notice when my subscription payment failed. Oh! Even paid oh, wow. subscriptions? That's rough. That's, that's rough. Hmm. Yeah, that's a big deal. Wow. I mean, that's, I mean, that's one thing to just unsubscribe somebody that, that doesn't pay, but if you've joined one, wow. That's a... Uh, Wow, yeah, that's, that's amazing. So, yeah, that's huge for sure. All right. Well, we are in the second bracket. We're go- advancing to Sweet 16 now. So, how do we see this going, Lupa? Yeah. So, for the this part in the West, Dadman's got Baylor, JT's got Baylor, Mommy's got Baylor, and you know I've got Baylor. CC. Like I said, Baylor only uh-huh. loses to good teams, and Clemson isn't a good team. So. Yeah. We can now, survive. I will tell you, New watch out, though, if, if they face New Mexico. New Mexico, that could be a challenge, though. Maybe, but they're yeah. not going to because I'm right, of course. So. <laughs> yeah. that's, all, that, that's all that needs to be said on that topic. You know? mm-hmm. uh, nope. <laughs> but, yes, I, I'm happy. I think that we can make it to the Sweet 16. After cool. that, who, who the heck knows? <laughs> All right. Well, let's keep looking. We'll see and see if anybody else will be happy. Since we know JT yep. Kurt is ending. And for West, we've got Dead Man's picking Arizona. JT's picking Arizona. Mommy's picking Dayton. Wow. Here. And I'm picking Arizona. Yeah. So mm-hmm. go for it, Mommy. Oh, I mean, like we said, Arizona Baylor has loves- a history of choking. Just saying, according to Godzilla, there. Hey, shut up, Godzilla. Now he sees himself in the <laughs> Wupstaska Gulag. Now, yeah, he's he's definitely getting he he's he's getting into one of those twenty five hour work days for sure. 
Ah, uh, there you go. That works. <laughs> Always good for people. I don't know his college, so I can't make fun of him right now. I, I don't know, know his he person. Keeps it, he keeps it quiet. <laughs> Either that or I just, he told me and I forgot. <laughs> it's always possible. Corey That's says the West. Yep. All right. So we're through the West now. So we should be South. Yes. Yeah, south. South bound. All right. All righty. So we've got Houston and Longwood here. This is really an ugly bracket. This, uh, I mean, it is. Don't look. I mean, if I, James Madison doesn't knock off Wisconsin, then there's this just the. I mean, Nebraska and Texas A&M. Uh, he said his college is not even in the turning. So, ha ha! Get wrecked, nerd. <laughs> oh my oh. god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Virginia's up to thirty-one. They pulled it with an eighteen. Whoa! Points. Oh they're my up, gosh! They're wow! Up 20, they're up to twenty-six percent field goal shooting. Stop the press! They broke the thirty marker. They are four of nine at free throws. So <laughs> four of nine. Oh my god. If, if you don't break 50 in a tournament game, I feel like you need to see yourself out. Exactly. <laughs> like you we don't care what you do next year, you're just you're just excluded. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. So where we go with this one, Wupa? I mean, we pretty much okay. know what we probably all pick on the front. Top yeah, line. for Houston, uh JT, I switched the order again. Look at this. I'm I'm, I'm so quirky and different. Um, <laughs> Mavi picked you, uh, Houston. I picked Houston, and Dadman picked Houston. So that's no surprise here. Uh, they were probably Houston was probably going to be the first, the number one overall seed until they choked to Iowa State, uh, which is crazy. But that was only their fourth loss of the entire year. So, uh. Nebraska and AM. JT's got AM. Mm -hmm. Mommy's got Nebraska. I've got AM and Dadman's got AM. Now I so, don't consider Nebraska a real Big Ten school yet. I feel like no. you gotta be in for at least 30 years before we count you. <laughs> so I think nope. you gotta have at least one winning football season, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep, I agree. Their way, I. But then again, like Godzillionaire said, they could choke. A and M could choke with this one. This is not. I mean, they ran out of gas against Florida. They're they're good defensive team, but they're not good on the perimeter. Generally, they're not one of the higher scoring teams in the nation. So a good matchup probably with Nebraska, but it's very a very pedestrian team. But they have the ability to upset some good teams at times. Oh, uh, Master said, Houston, we have a problem, and it has to do with football. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep going. Wisconsin, James Madison, a 5 12 matchup that we have here. Yeah. Let's see how we did together with and this one. So, JT's picking Wisconsin. Mombie's picking Wisconsin. I'm picking James Madison, and Davin's picking James yep. Madison. Yep. The Dukes. We got this. We got this. The Dukes. Yeah, it just, I mean, Wisconsin just got bad, worse as the year went on. They were uh, higher ranked uh, in the nation and then just just, just wilted down the, the stretch and, and really didn't do much in the conference tournament. So that's why we went. Uh, JT, did you see much of Wisconsin this year? No, but they loved losing on the road. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean that, man. JT saw some of James Madison, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. The, I don't the, know. The, I got hit on the head they, last night, so I forgot like half the season that I watched. So. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so was that the head the head trauma or the the whiskey trauma? <laughs> oh no, it was definitely no. I did actually get hit on the head last night and drew blood. It was a. Uh, Oh, geez. oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, um, I'm mostly okay, maybe. Hmm. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Um, anyway, no, <laughs> um, Wisconsin, <sighs> they're weak Jesus sauce. Going bad. But I, I think they're going to pull it out by like four or five points. It's going to be ugly, honestly. 
Yeah. If Wisconsin wins, it's going to be typical Big 12 or Virginia fashion, ugly mm. and low scoring. Mm -hmm. It's just, there's no way around it. No. Mm. Yeah. I just picked James Madison because I think they're the team of destiny. There is no research yeah. that went into this. It's just simply. <laughs> they're, they're in the t right sweet spot, being a 12th seed. They've got a team like Wisconsin who is vulnerable, who's not mm -hmm. overly uh, good on, on the offensive side of things, at least to get past this. I and mean, Duke we've seen is not what Duke usually is. I mean, they're a fourth seed. They did very well in the ACC. But what is the ACC these days? They lost twice mm -hmm. to North Carolina, even at home. I, you know. Yeah, but who's Vermont? I mean, the Catamounts. The Catamounts actually years ago did pull an upset in the tournament. They are a team that wins their league most years and actually has been in the, the tournament quite a bit. So, and Duke has had times when they struggled, you know, with the lower seeded teams. So you never know. Yep. Speaking of Duke, though, they've got mm. JT picking Duke. Vermont. Yeah. Mommy's yeah. picking Duke. I'm picking yeah. Duke. And that man's yep. picking Duke. So we did all yep. still pick Duke here. Yep. yep. Pick the Dukies. <laughs> now, which Dukes do we pick on the next one? We shall see uh, as we move to the next. The advance yes. to the Sweet 16. Yep. So here we've got Mostly Houston and they am one Houston, Nebraska. We've got JT's picking Houston, Bobby's picking Houston, I'm picking Houston, and Damn picking Houston. So yeah, we're all on the same page. All right. And then we've got the bottom. Excuse me. That's the barrel right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much this whole this whole this whole South is kind of the weakest one. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, we've got JT picking Wisconsin. Mombi's picking Duke. I'm picking the Dukes. I think they're the Dukes. James Madison, another 12 seed. That's that. Mm -hmm. If you're counting at home, that's two 12 seeds that have going to the Sweet 16. And we've actually seen that before. We've mm -hmm. seen some seasons with quite a few double digit seeded teams. And the dad man's picking Duke. Yeah. I'm not here. I'm not going. Oh, that'll be right. interesting. We're definitely going to have some uh, variety of results. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, this has nothing to do with any research. It's just, uh, oh, wow, conformity. Master said it's he's just... picking dude as he found a vintage sunscreen of them on Sunday, and it just looks cool. <laughs> I, just I thought think... you were picking Duke because of Atreides, and, and you love the Dune movie. Ah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but I think too funny. James Madison, they won the Sun Belt in uh, football. Mm -hmm. and they weren't going to get a bowl game, but they did because there weren't enough teams and they won. And then now here they are. They win in the Sun Belt in basketball. So I think, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes you just have a team of destiny. And that's them. That's all the research I need. I don't need any stats or anything. I just need my gut. And I agree with that. Usually they're, wrong. They're there are times that you just it's it's you can't explain it. It's just a feel, and you end up kicking yourself in the butt when you're like, "Well, why didn't I say that? Why didn't I go with that?" You know. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So That's now we come to number one for us. Yeah. So we come to the last. We got Texas Tech, and NC State. I think this could be the best game of the first round. Texas Tech is a pretty solid team. They've got some good wins. NC State is hot, just coming off five straight, you know, five wins in five days to win the tournament, including a miraculous comeback, uh, in you know, in in a game where they ended up forcing, they were down big, forced overtime, then uh, you know, ended up winning the game, uh, he tied it with a uh, just a miraculous comeback they did, and then beating North Carolina very solidly. So. This, like mm -hmm. you said, Whoop is a very, very hot team. Oh, yeah. And it's not easy doing what they did, so. Nope. Because they would have made the NCAA tournament without winning their conference championship. Definitely not. I think they were like a 10th seed in the ACC. Yep. So no, or 11th again. They were a double-digit seed. Yeah. Well, yeah. 
So it's a pretty, I think they're a pretty good team. And mm. but Texas Tech also they beat Baylor, sadly. Nope. I don't know who yeah. hasn't. Uh, but um, the only predictions JT's got the Red Raiders, Mombi's got the Red Raiders, I've got NC State. And really? Batman's got NC State, so we're we're split here. Okay. Yep. I NC really think I, I really think this is going to be a good game. I think whoever wins this game could really, really go make some do some damage. So either one of these teams can play with Kentucky. Kentucky is weak on the defensive side of the ball. They and they did go dry for a lot, lot spurts and not always the most efforts mm. uh, with this Kentucky team. Yep, that is true. Um, and then for the yeah, for Kentucky and Oakland, JT's got Kentucky. Mommy's got Kentucky. I've got Kentucky, and Dadman's got Kentucky. So nothing too surprising here. Uh, Florida versus TBD. Yep. Which uh, would be the winner, Boise, Colorado, I believe. Yep. So, so JT's got the Gators. Mombi's got the Gators. I've got the Gators. And of course, go Gators. Go Gators. Go Gators. This, this should be an easy win. It should be an easy win for them to go and do this, uh, you know, this game, I, I would think. But, you know, I've mm-hmm. actually started watching Gator basketball again this year. I'd given up with the hopeless of Mike <laughs> White, who's now in Georgia, because it was like 20 and 10. And like you get an NCAA burp, but it was so boring. You'd find ways to lose in choke games. But they've got a good coach, the Todd Golden that came from San Francisco, the Dons. is actually, I think, a pretty damn good coach. And he's got them. He's got depth. He's got size in the front line. It's a very loaded team. Unfortunately, they did lose a seven-foot-one center. They've got other depth, but how much will it affect us So going forward? Mm-hmm. So, But I do think that this Gator team can run the distance because I'll, I'll hold off on another thought till the next till the next part of the bracket. Hmm. But we've got Marquette and Western Kentucky, the Hilltoppers. Uh, JT's got Marquette. Mobby's got Marquette. I've got Marquette, and Dad Man's got Marquette. So no, yeah. no surprises here, really. Nope. Marquette's always very dangerous in the tourney. Always. All I could think of is that Marquette should only be good back in the what the 70s with that one guy that was a, an announcer for many years. Oh, he was a coach for the Marquette many years ago, and I could see his face. On, he did college basketball announcing. Uh, that's the only time Marquette should be good, but, you know, I have to look that up. So... All right. Okay. So now, how yeah. we got how we got the last part of this at the final sixteen or of our sweet sixteen going? All right. So for JT, this he's got the Wildcats. Mommy's got Texas Tech going. Oh, I got NC State going, and damon has got Kentucky. Well then, so we got a nice spread here as well. But I'm not. It's a weak Kentucky. Pick. This is this is a thing. This is how much this is like everything in the SEC. It feels like you got Kentucky just contradicts itself all the time. You got yeah. like, hey, they go into Tennessee and win, and then they also at home give up a hundred to Tennessee. Like, yeah, they I, I, I don't make sense. You know, they lost to UNC Wilmington. You should feel shame. They're losing to any UNC that's not UNC. Masters, I do not tell anybody <laughs> where to put money. I know you're joking, but hey, yeah, it, I wouldn't be surprised if the Gators be, pull a choke job too. That would be typical Florida fashion, but mm. you know. But we'll go ahead and see what we're going to go in this this part of the bracket here. Yeah. So JT's got Marquette. Mobby's got Marquette. I got the Gators. And Dadman's got the kid. Wow, Whoopa. I can't believe it. I thought I was uh and Corey's like for I think anyone but not yeah. UK to win, and he's good. <laughs> <laughs> I no, have not I... seen much of Marquette, but I mean the fact that you picked the Gators really is something. So why do you I... think that? 
because I'm crazy. I don't know. Okay, well, this, we, we, the we, South we is <laughs> the South is just this this bracket besides Houston, which I think is a really good team. Like all these teams, like they have flaws. Marquette has had some good wins. They also had some bad losses. Um, I don't. They they let me down last year in the tournament, and I'm not letting them do it to me again. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. But no, I've like I've got I have my final my six sweet sixteen from the South being a one seed, a seven seed, a tw- eleven seed, and a twelve seed. And some of that's mm. because I just want to be crazy. But some of it's like yeah, like this Marquette team has some ups and downs. Kentucky has some big flaws. I don't even remember who the four seed was. Oh, Duke. Duke is dropping the ball every other game. Um, it was like, there's so many teams here that can, like, I could definitely see upsets happening. When, I don't think it would be surprising. There's a lot of just shaky higher seeds here. So, mm-hmm. As a Gator fan, I loved this bracket for them. Even though they were seated down mm-hmm. at seventh, I mean, because if they'd have won the tournament, Auburn won the SEC tournament, got a fourth seed, but Florida ended up like almost went tournament was hot at the end of the year, but only got a seventh seed in it. But it slots, I think, very well for them because of, you know they got size, they got depth, they got a lot of talent that they've not had before in prior years. They everybody gets hot. I mean, they take turns, somebody hot one night or the next. They really have a truly off night and honestly it's one of those teams that can play from behind and you don't w- worry about it and i i've gotten used to that them unfortunately it's auburn they just got behind and got too far behind but they were behind in many games this year and still chugged their way back and won it they also choked a few games uh, being ahead but you know i it's a team that you don't give up on they've got perimeter shooting they've got size inside they got scores inside uh, you know this that's why I think it sets up with this South bracket for the Gators that if they can stay hot, they could and, and overcome the loss of their seven footer. They could march through here. And I tell you what, they'll beat Kentucky in a sweet 16 matchup. If they make it that far and assuming Kentucky makes it that far. Yeah. So, all right. Well, that's what we have, and that's the final of our final predictions, right? Uh, no, we still got round. the Midwest. We still got the Midwest. God, see, oh, that's man. The Midwest. <laughs> I forgot we about talking. the Midwest. Wow. So, <laughs> all right. Well, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So Midwest. What's that? No. Yeah. What's that? Which one ever catch you? Just kidding. So we've got per, we've got Purdue and whoever wins tomorrow in the 16th seed battle. <laughs> Excuse me. And mm-hmm. um, Purdue won one. the Big Ten. No, they didn't. They well, lost the, in the, the season, not the tournament. They did. They, yeah. They lost in the tournament, even though uh, the rest were wearing their Purdue uniforms as usual. Season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one is Purdue, 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 and Purdue. Sorry for no, mm-hmm. no dramatic reveal. Corey is saying same here. They had two to three good years of players get drafted and figure build a program out. Yeah, the whole mercenary type program instead of keeping mm-hmm. three to four years and go pro with the title in the bank. Yep. And when Godzilla says per don't. Per don't. Corey says uh, Stanford all the way. <laughs> Stanford. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just think uh Stanford and Son. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> Lisbeth. <laughs> I'm going to get a squirrel away. I know. It's not towards you. It's towards all the other people that might say something. That's all. <laughs> we, we are always doing disclaimers around here. Hmm. I think we lost Bobby. Bobby's starting to giggle like crazy. <laughs> it's too late. That's what happens Utah. when you get up at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Utah State and TCU. Mombie's got TCU. I've got TCU. Uh, Davin's got TCU. And JT's got TCU. I'm surprised. I well, then. What was that? 
I said, oh, I said, well, then. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. I don't like I don't like picking the dread. All the same. Drugs. Yeah. Well, not all that, but I just don't. TCU is Baylor's sworn enemy. Well, I had to pick UNC got... in Kentucky and Duke, so. You know. Yeah, it's, it's tough all around. <laughs> we got Gonzaga and McNeese State. Mobby's picking Gonzaga. I'm picking the cowboy people. Wow. Then yeah. Devin's got Gonzaga and yeah. JT's got Gonzaga. I think Gonzaga Gonzaga is the same thing with the West Coast Conference. Why are why are we they just, good? Oh well. You had beat, to be different, Whoopa. Yeah. I had did. To be different. Listen, uh, I, look at Corey Cochran. Look what Corey came up. Sanford and Son McNeese for the fine finale. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's make it happen. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you guys weren't pulling your weight and picking enough upsets, so I had to, I had to oh, you know, mm-hmm. step, take one for the mm-hmm. team. No, I just think Gonzaga's I mean, just—I I don't know—they beat Kentucky one time by a little bit. That's and they beat St. Mary's, who's only good because they beat Gonzaga. By the so, way, with a minute left in the game, Colorado State sixty-six, Virginia forty. Oh, they hit 40. Wow. It's a miracle. They hit 40, yes. I 26 doubt they're going to hit 50. 26 points they're in the not. second half. They might not get above 40. Well, you know, if they had the 21st second half in the first half, they'd only be around 52 points. So, yeah, you could, I think you could give them a, a third half and they still just wouldn't. <laughs> they still wouldn't be able to win, even if <laughs> Colorado State just didn't play offense. Yeah. Hey, let's do something a little something but non on sports real quick. because uh, we talked about eating together, but uh Mr. Angel said uh, to Town Hungry, one restaurant he worked at had an issue with lots of lonely singles occupying tables. So he fixed it by giving the ten percent discount on the menu, but they had to all sit together at a big table. That was wow. interesting. Get people together, you never never know who you match make mm-hmm. either, but that way you can you know not tie up your tables so much. So and Masters gives it up for Utah, but he has no clue. It sounds controversial. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're now Kansas Sanford this game. Yep. So we've got here. Bobby's picking Kansas. I'm picking Kansas. Deadman's picking Kansas. And uh yep. JC's picking Kansas. This was right. a hard game for me. This was a hard Gross. game for me. This is one that I wanted, and I still think Sanford could win this game because Kansas is without at least one of their uh, best players I just saw in the uh, news. Uh, yeah. I just, I, I, that, I just like, you can't pick everything and upset. I just, I don't know. I, I want to pick Sanford. I think they could do it. So it does make me nervous that mm-hmm. I just saw, I did just see what you saw. That they shut down a guy for the whole tournament. So I don't know, but I still no. think they can win this one. All right. So now we go back to the top part of the Midwest, the yep. top part of the Midwest bracket. We move Mommy's to... got Purdue. Mm-hmm. I've got Purdue. Yeah. Dadman's got Purdue and JT's oh. got Purdue. So no fun. We are very, very, yeah, very this... more. It really is a very <laughs> generic pedestrian eight nine teams that really don't look like a threat. To, yeah, uh, mm-hmm. like I feel like Purdue's ready to get upset, but I don't think they're going to face anyone in in the until the Sweet Sixteen. Right, you can actually challenge that pass. That pass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Now I would be intrigued to see a Sanford Purdue matchup. Honestly, you think, they could go, you think they could go too, huh? Yeah, but see, the problem is you have Kansas and Gonzaga there, and they make more money on TV. So, I mean, yeah, but the thing is, as Sanford wins, that's the thing. I could see Sanford beating. Uh, I think if Sanford beats Kansas, they could beat Gonzaga easily. So I, you know, I, I'm not sold in Gonzaga, especially since they did win the conference this year. Uh, but you know, it's just can but can Sanford show up and, and knock off Kansas first? That's the first step. My big question is: do, Is Purdue getting the the Big Ten refs in their games? Because that's really a oh god! They're right when you said it. Good thing Stanford can't pay the refs enough. Yeah, does <laughs> Purdue get? I mean, 
I don't, I guess they're not very good at football, so they're they're the opposite of Michigan. You know, they they put all the money in bribing the refs there. Mm-hmm. But they get. Allegedly. I don't know if you allegedly, but mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that that quote unquote uh, offensive no defensive foul that they called on Wisconsin in that Purdue wow. game where the Wisconsin guy was perfectly set, and then Zach Eady just. Bowled them over. They're like, "Oh, that's a foul. You was you can't touch that." that Edie, high that's tower game. Yeah, that's just. I think it was the free throws were thirty three to eight in favor of Purdue. And it's just like, guys, what do you? There's. I don't know. It frustrates me. So if they get that refing, who knows? I mean, if you know, if you get that refing, you have to go into the game knowing, all right, well, we basically are already down by ten, <laughs> so we've got to. We've got to make up for it there. Absolutely. Oh, well. All right. All right. So the bottom half of this, we've got uh, Mombi's picking Gonzaga. I'm picking Kansas. Dadman's picking Kansas. And JT's picking Gonzaga. So wow. we've got an uh, even split here. Wow. And I do think, yeah, this is interesting. Kansas without the, one of their best players, Gonzaga, kind of in a down year for them. This could it was this a tough, is, tough one to pick for sure. You feel like you got to pick who you think is going to lose, not who's going to win. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But yeah. This is a these these this four and five seed seem a little weaker, but mm-hmm. so moving on to the second half of the bracket, we've got. South Carolina and the Oregon Daffies. <laughs> yep. Uh, Mommy's picking Carolina. Mm-hmm. I'm picking Oregon. Dadman's picking Carolina, and JT's picking Oregon. So we've got. Could not go here. with the Gamecocks. Just couldn't <laughs> do it. Just couldn't do it. No. They are a much improved team over last year, though. So they've they've had a complete turnaround. So it, uh, that's true. Is- but Oregon did take down. Arizona in the Pac-12 on en route to a conference championship. So, yep, yep. the last exactly. Pac-12 conference champion. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, for anything really, I mean, what will yeah. Oregon State and Washington State do next year? <laughs> like That's the Pac-4. true. No, it's just the Pac-2. I think Pac-2 right now. Even, <laughs> yeah, the other two teams and... went to the ACC. Oh, did they? Yep. Which is Stanford and Cal. It's like, how the hell does that happen? That's, that's, I hate it. But, (laughs) all right. So, yeah. We've got Creighton and Akron here. Uh, Mommy's picking Creighton. I'm picking Creighton. Devin's picking Creighton. And JT's picking Creighton. So we're, we're all in there. Cheap, cheap. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Yeah. A fierce battle cry. Right. <laughs> so we got Texas and probably. Well, let's see. Is it official or not yet? Uh, yes, it's official. Colorado State did win. Yep. Um, I don't. I, I turn my head. The official score is not up, but it's probably around sixty-six to forty. I think. Mm-hmm. So Texas versus Colorado State. Uh, Mommy's picking Texas. I'm picking Colorado State. I I I, th- I could go with that. I I, I, could, I could actually see that. Mm. I'm trying. To... Hey, Zach Rod 315. How do you to you? Hey, How Zach are you doing? How do you see you? We've talked about sports <laughs> ball, non sports ball, all kinds of crazy stuff. Sit back, relax. <laughs> we got ten people watching us now at almost tonight. Thank you. Nice. Hit that like button. Love and subscribe. Everything else. Hey, talk non football. We adjust. You know, we see we're talking restaurants and eateries in the chat. So, and who knows as we're going, what else we might talk about? But throw it out there. We'll see if it sticks. If you've got questions about college basketball or any sports, feel free to ask, and we will try to reach out and answer all of your sporting needs. All right, go ahead, Wupa. Demons got Texas, and you really rode that upside down Longhorn. Oh yeah. You're, you're dang right, I did. You really, you really do not like, like Texas, do you? No, I don't like these guys. I don't think anyone who's didn't. I don't think there's anyone who didn't go to 
UT that doesn't. Well, I mean, I guess there's there's plenty of fans of UT who aren't smart enough to go to college. But uh. if if you look at the Texas symbol, the right side up, and you're taking a Rorschach test, well, uh, looks like something. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. No, I I'm not a fan. They're they're lame. They're not the word. I mean, I I think I hate Oklahoma more. Like, well, UT they're they're too just... scared to come up to Big Ten country, Dad Man, and and we still yeah. don't like Texas. Yeah. Well, it's just I I still remember when they're like, oh man, we're elite. You know, we've got that great pedigree. And I was like, haven't you guys finished six and six for the last like five years? I <laughs> they're, they're just, yeah. they. They were always acting like it was the Vince Young years still. It's like, come on, guys. You got to do something within the last decade. Yeah, exactly. Can't rest on your laurels forever. Mm, I think until this year, they still had the same amount of Big 12 football championships as Nebraska, who hadn't been here since, what, I forget when they left. I think it was, um, oh, gosh, I think it was like 2011, 2012, something around yeah. there. So they gave him a whole decade. It took him a whole decade to pass a team that wasn't even in the conference. <laughs> Still, yeah. It's like, what are you guys doing? But oh well. I'm sure they'll have fun in the SEC now. <laughs> but oh, the SEC, goodness. I'll have fun with them if you know what I mean. Oh but... yeah. They can't even handle putting your fingers down. I don't think they're going to handle SEC fans very well. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not at all. We've, we've got Tennessee and the Peacocks. The great uh the great uh Cinderella story of old. Yeah, another upset another team that was not expected to win a conference tournament, but did. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. That's gosh. the thing that I how was it? The Texas logo is properly shaped for the SEC if you look at it right. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's where I was going earlier. Yep. <laughs> but no, that, that's a thing that I noticed a lot of with a lot of these like teams that weren't expected to win the conference but did is like, uh, they're the teams that have been there before. You see a lot of like repeat guys who I don't know if it's like veteran coaching or veteran players that are, you know. It's you see them outperform when it matters in the playoffs because they've got that experience. Yes. Yeah. So, but on that though, mommy picked Tennessee. I picked Tennessee. Yeah. Batman picked Tennessee and JT picked Tennessee. So we still did pick Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's interesting because this is again, Tennessee is one of those. No, I feel like most of these SEC basketball teams, they just do weird stuff. I don't understand. Because mm-hmm. you've got – I mean, they are they scheduled a pretty tough out-of-conference. And they have, yeah, Illinois, North Carolina, Kansas, and Purdue. But they went one and three in those games. Yeah, they did the, the Tom Izzo strategy, play mm-hmm. really tough opponents and lose. So yeah. how they still got a number two out of that is amazing. And they, lost, they got beat. By pretty handily by Mississippi State in the first round of the tournament, so it's mm-hmm. like you know, it's hard for me to make make uh, heads or tails of that. I can uh, I can understand like a tournament loss if you've been strong all year, but if you've got some shakiness and then you're out right away on the tournament, it's kind of like oh maybe maybe they're not gonna go far. So, but. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is another upset, but we'll see. Uh, going up here to the top, uh, we've all got Creighton, but we're mix, mismatched on the above the six and eleven matchup. Mombi's got Creighton going on. I've got Creighton. Dadman's got Creighton, mm-hmm. and JT's got the Ducks. Going yep. for the sweet wow. sixteen. So I, I just <laughs> feel like Nike wants it. It's gonna happen. <laughs> that's true. If they get to the sweet Love sixteen, the they can release another a new uniform for it. Yes. In the week. <laughs> Love the logic. <laughs> so I mean a lot of this is and Creighton 
And will That's it be as bad as the baseball uniforms? Probably. Oh. Every this game is pretty foul, uniforms. though, no matter which way you look uh. at it. <laughs> Anyone have a, a drum set soundboard? <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, this is a thing. Oh, Nike's closer, <laughs> Oregon main store, so boom, they lose. Oh, new new news. If only GT knew that before he paid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're too busy ruining all of Michigan State's jerseys for the last decade. So Exactly. Keep ruining all the jerseys. I'm still mad at what they did to Baylor's. Baylor had some sick like blackout jerseys. And then they're like, let's just give you really generic ones. No, it's interesting. Oregon obviously won the Pac-12, and Creighton lost in their first matchup to Providence. Who is, I mean, usually Providence not a bad school this year. They they not good, so that's a pretty rough loss. But yeah, we shall see. On to our next matchup, the bottom Midwest here. Zombies got Tennessee. I've got Tennessee. Dadman's got Tennessee. And JT's got Tennessee. So we're all still picking Tennessee here, even though they do have a up and down. I just think, yeah. I mean, Texas Texas just didn't do that well. I, I didn't pick Texas, but I don't think Colorado State did well enough. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a, that's a trend. There's so many. That's why I think there could be a lot of upsets is like there's outside of like UConn and Houston, I don't know if there's a team where you can say for sure, like, oh yeah, they they'll definitely breeze by. It's like everyone has their weaknesses, and there are some lower seeds that look pretty good. But you notice, and we got a couple brackets that we've had pretty good unanimity and stuff. Uh, but I think if you look, let's see, can you go back? Can you go back? How hard does it go back to each of our completed uh, Sweet Sixteens? You gotta go back, don't you? Boom! I gotta go. <laughs> Each one of these is one animation, so I've got. Sorry about that, because I'm just curious. Because it looked like, see, we know the Midwest. See, we have a little south, variation here in the South. This is a little. I mean, this one is. We've got some variation in the. I think uh, here. Let me. Because we've got see, each. We, each of us have a different matchup in the South for this, this yeah. Sweet Sixteen. Um, even if we got a lot of the same in the second round, the, the yep. Sweet 16. And this is also, well, everyone's got Houston, but you've got a lot of variation in here and on here. I think the South is definitely one of the, I guess I can, hold on. I can just, oop, pay no mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can, since we're done with the predictions, I don't have to hide the, right. I don't have to hide them anymore. Okay, um, so see, we got yeah, so this pretty is well, a little different. Yeah. Uh, this one it gets a little different over here, at least. I still think the South is probably the one where we had the most variation. Probably South is the craziest, and I know we're we're not doing uh, anything farther, but I think you know my overall bracket that I submitted. The I the South gets even crazier for me. But. Was there East? Uh, what about yeah the East? See, well East we we got some. Uniqueness over here in the east. Yeah. Over here was uh, outside of yeah. Yale. I still think the south is the one that we had the most uh, variation. And I tell yeah. you, if you if you're a mid team, like whether you're Nebraska, uh, uh, Texas A&M, or Florida, or uh, or even NC State, it's this bracket sets up the south region sets up for you if you're hot. To, to go far and to knock off the uh, the higher ranked seeds. Yep. No, I think the South is going to be very because uh, Houston only scored fifty. They were kind of like Virginia like in their championship game when they lost. Oh yeah, they got stomped by Iowa State. Um, no. Eight nine matchup. Both of those I think are toss ups. Uh, Wisconsin's no. interesting. Duke is not having a good year. Uh, then yeah, Texas Tech and NC State. I can see both of them. Kentucky not having a good year. Florida just made it to the SEC championship. And Marquette, you know, they're okay. Uh, so it's just, they, I think there's a lot of potential for some excitement in the South over here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like you look at this, we've each got a different matchup here. That's pretty cool. And yep. so I, I'm, I think that's going to be the most exciting bracket for sure. 
I think the well, I think the East. I know we mostly agreed here on the East, but I think this is going to be exciting, especially once you get kind of past this round. Mm-hmm. But I think the East and the South, I think, are the opposites. Like the South, you look at a lot of the teams, and pretty much everyone is like, "Anther, eh, they've got some problems." The East, I mean, you've got UConn. Uh, yeah. They've had some bad lo- like they've had a couple of bad losses, but other than that, they've they've dominated and they played a really good non conference schedule and still mopped up. Yeah, uh, Florida Atlantic, we know about them. San Diego State, both of those big guys from last year. Auburn SEC champs, uh, BYU, historically good. I- Illinois Big Ten champs, Iowa State Big Twelve champs. We've got Drake won a pretty. I mean, I I think that they're pretty good. Uh, team with their uh, win over Indiana State. Washington State is always a good story, at least. Like, there, there's a, I think these, I don't think there's going to be as many upsets in this because I think the top seeds are good. But I think almost all of these games, at least after the first round, are going to be exciting. Like Illinois and BYU should be a good game. Um, or is it UConn FAU think should be a good game? Auburn and whoever they play should be a good game. Sorry, Bombi. I know I'm not giving I'm not giving Yale credit, but maybe they'll make it. Uh, <laughs> but I think East is like I think there's a lot of good teams. You're gonna get some good matchups, even if they're not necessarily upsets. So I think those are gonna be the ones to watch. I think the West is gonna be kind of ugly. And the Midwest also very ugly. I I don't I feel like over here it's just like Purdue, Gonzaga, Kansas, all of them are kind of meh. So it's just it's a, uh, sci-fi mommy or JT. Mm-hmm. Any thoughts overall? What do you think about Whoopa's breakdown? What did we said? Do y'all have any other thoughts as we start to wrap up uh, on this part of the show? We're going to talk a little bit the NIT in just a second. Mm, no, not really. I'm, like okay. I said, I'm learning so. There you go. That's okay. Yeah. JT, any Learned other a lot. I, you know, it's always this thing when you go through and pick these. You have the names that are there every year, you know, um, Purdue, Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan State, um, North Carolina, Duke, Marquette, Gonzaga. I'm probably missing, you know, half a dozen others that are just there every single year. And so you just tend to pick them. Um, or you tend to go to, I'm tired of seeing these teams every single time. Mm-hmm. Let me go pick the weird ones like McNeese or Samford or, right. um, you know, all of those. And then you get burned that way too. <laughs> so yep. um, it's always, I always feel like you end up falling back on your gut trying to make a lot of these picks. And that results in me having a very busted bracket by the time the sweet 16 comes around. So I'm kind of happy that we, you know, we did pick some obvious ones. I think like the Purdue route and and that kind of, kind of thing, but we did pick a bunch of different teams, which shows that there might be some good life in the tournament and it's not going to be just a, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, all the way to the sweet 16. So, yeah, exactly. And, you know, uh, March Madness is called that for a reason because you never know when it goes crazy and upsets happen. So uh, yep. you never know. Uh, and Godzilla Air, as we transition, said it was in a long time before I realized NIT did not stand for not in tournament. Right now, <laughs> so, I think it stands for not interested tournament. Yeah. Yes. Oh, by the way, Virginia lost 67 42. They doubled their output in the second half exactly from 14 to 28. Yay, Virginia. <laughs> wow. So I've, uh, I've got something go something related sh- to share. If you saw someone a, a shirt that was spotted at the game. Okay. Uh all right. Well here. I'm gonna add you ready for me to add it? Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh, that is so perfect. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yes. That was good. <laughs> it's very yes. true right now. Very true. <laughs> I wonder which side the one wore that. Um, it must be a Colorado State fan with the green, I guess. Oh, oh that's right. I, I forgot about that. I'm like, who was green? Oh, yeah. 
Like who I was thinking come up with that shirt? Uh, they were prepared and they were they were correct. I mean, holy cow. <laughs> well, let me. Uh, we're going to talk about the NIT, which NIT is, is normally made up of teams that do not make the NCAA men's division uh, one basketball championship. Uh, they've had rule changes this year, which were some surprise rule changes in the prior years. That the two, if you won your conference's regular season, you got an automatic bid. Well, this year they can change that all, and that's no longer. So you could be, like I said, in the smaller conferences, and and you know you could be twenty eight and three and lose the conference tournament to a four and twenty team, and that one team gets the league's berth if they win the championship at four and twenty, and the league has nobody into the NIT. Uh, what they've done is take two teams out of uh, two highest ranking teams out of the power six conferences. So, and then the rest of the other 32 field gets chosen out of the rest, the rest of the teams that are there, the bet, the best, the other, uh, the best 20 uh, in scores tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a second while you get prepped with uh, JT uh, right now, you see Irvine is playing Utah. Uh, of course, I saw all the list of California schools. It's ridiculous. Um, North Texas goes on the road, wins at LSU, 84 uh, 77. Boston College bit, wins at Providence, 62 57. Georgia holds at home, 78 76 over Xavier. Uh, Cornell um, loses to Ohio State, 88 83. USF, man, that was a team that looked like that they had a good season, but they were relegated to the uh, NIT, beats UCF, 83 77. Uh, Virginia Tech beats Richmond 74-58. Minnesota beats Butler 73-72. Iowa, who was proud to take the bid, uh, unlike a lot of the Big Ten teams, wins at Kansas State 91-82. Uh, Tarleton, the cigarette school of Texas, wins 82-71 over Texas Southern. And another battle of Texas schools, Abilene Christian wins 73-63 over Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Now, what we have here, what we were talking about was that the NIT, the rule changes are that the, 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 in, for the 2024 NIT conference regular season champions that do not win their conference tournaments or are not otherwise selected to the men's basketball championship will not receive an automatic bid to the NIT. Instead, the NIT will guarantee two teams based on NET rankings from each of the six conferences, Atlantic Coast, Big East, Big Ten, Big 12, Pac-12, Southeastern, the top two teams in the NET rankings not qualifying for the men's basketball tournament, the NCAAs from each conference, regardless of one loss record, will be selected. Additionally, the 12 teams automatically selected will be guaranteed the opportunity to host a game in the first round of the NIT. So you really have a really weird, massive rule change with this. So once they select the 12 automatic qualifiers, they select the 20 uh, best at large re, uh, teams based on the NIT committee's evaluation. So um, they give um, the complete 16 first round hosts differences. Deference is given to the quote first four teams out of the division one's mass men's basketball championship. Uh, so uh, geez. Uh, now additional teams from the conference, six conferences that have the automatic bids are eligible to be selected and can be selected as host. So what we have is this massively huge uh, change. Also, what we also have this year is that that uh, in the days of transfer portals and players not staying through time, the uh, we actually have a number of major schools that did not take the bid to the NIT because they viewed the, NI, the NCAA are bust. The six notable schools – that declined the invitations are St. John's, Pitt, Panthers, Memphis Tigers, the Ole Miss Rebels, the Indiana Hoosiers, and the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, well, there was a new list. You, I, I put it in the chat earlier. Oh, okay. Well, that's the six that I saw that – were there more than six? Yes. I um, There's a tweet above I posted. Is it the twit? Okay, I'll, I'll do that. So I didn't know. I didn't know all of those until I saw this, like right before the stream. I think. Do you want yeah. me to read the current list? Yeah, go ahead, JT. Go ahead. Uh, Arizona State, Cal, wow. Florida State, 
Indiana, Maryland, Memphis, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Oregon State. What is the Beavers? What is freaking hell did the Beavers turn it down? They sucked uh, already. They should be lucky to play another game. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Pitt, sorry, St. Bonaventure, St. John's, Stanford, Syracuse, UCLA, USC, and Washington. It reminds me of this year's college bowl games in yeah. football. Well, in Indiana. I mean, they're dead. I mean, in, yeah, go ahead. And I was going to say Indiana passed, you know, mm. and, and I didn't know it was, well here. Um, this is something that maybe I can get it to look at this. If I may, if you see that dad, man, let's see. Oh, I got to get back on the stream here. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Yeah. You want me to add it now? Sure. Okay. So Whoa. let's see here. I'll try to make it that yeah. a little easier to read. No. Okay. So right here you have Purdue as a one, Illinois in the tournament, Nebraska, Northwestern, Wisconsin. Okay. Wisconsin, mm -hmm. I think, was a fifth seed. So I believe yep. they were the lowest seeded of all of those. Now you see here there's a three way tie. Um, with 10 wins. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, Michigan State has more home victories, but also, you know, middle of the pack for a loss. Indiana did not get invited. Iowa did not get invited. Michigan State was invited as a nine seat. So, you know, there's 16 teams in, in that region but you didn't have room for Indiana and you didn't have room for Iowa, but you had room for MSU. Uh, now they're my team. So I'm happy that they picked them, but it just seems really um, kind of not fair in some ways yeah. <laughs> that they went this no. way. Um, so that I was like, man, Indiana didn't, didn't get picked. I thought they were probably a better team. I mean, the record kind of betrays that a little bit. Um, but yeah, that that is not good for a team in a school that loves their basketball team to to have that happen. Mm -hmm. Now, I did want to bring attention to one more thing, and mm -hmm. that's way down here. The University of Michigan <laughs> is at the bottom of the Big Ten. Uh, they had three wins this year. Yay! So uh, lost nine right. in a row to end the season. <laughs> yeah, get wrecked. Um, yeah. Yeah, eight wins. I mean, that's 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 pretty good in in college football. College basketball, maybe not, maybe not great. Yeah, so I just wanted to let everybody see the good news right there. Well, there they you go. had a nine yeah. game losing streak. So uh, I give it give it back over to you there. But uh, yeah. yeah, so what do you guys well, think about Indiana just getting totally passed over like that? I I can agree with it. it it's it's just. It's, I especially Michigan State has Tom Izzo. I think that that probably helped get mm -hmm. him in. They have a, uh, um, they have a uh, track record, especially with Tom Izzo. I think that that's probably why they got the nod over the other two. Uh, mm -hmm. Indy, you know, because Indiana's never been the same since they got rid of Bobby Knight, and they don't. Right. They're just a pedestrian team, unlike uh, Michigan State that has won championships. Over the years under Tom Izzo, Iowa is Iowa, so just go figure that. Um, yeah, it's yeah. A, it, I, I can but see the part of a Big Twelve, a Big Ten fan, but then again, you've got a lot of mid-major schools that probably have earned the right by play. You know, they're playing better competition this day and mm -hmm. age, and you know, it is a tournament. Get them in. I mean, get some from the uh, Mountain West, uh, from the Big West Conference that normally wouldn't have gotten it in, in the past years. So then, why but, not? play in the NIT. You, well, you know, just... because, because what's happened, and I think a lot of the influence is that they start recruiting, you know, because they want to, for whatever reason, they want to start recruiting. It's like, screw the rest of the season, screw playing, because it used to be, we're going to play to get more practice for next year and all. But I, this article uh, under Microsoft News uh, quotes Rick Patino explaining his team's decision. First and quote, first and foremost, we have great respect for the National Invitation Tournament and St. John's storied history in the event. 
quote, continue goes on. After thorough consideration of all that goes into postseason participation, we believe at this time it is best for our team and basketball program to prepare for next season. We remain focused on building a championship-level basketball program here at St. John's. I would like to thank all of our fans for their wonderful support this past season. Look forward yeah. to the bright future ahead for St. John's basketball. End quote. But I'm like, what if you're a friggin' senior? You know, yeah. use this is the end of your career. You know, God, let them play the damn game. I mean, how much? How much more? And, and folks, I tell you what, the, the NIT is a couple weeks at most. I, they start playing the day after the announcement, really. What mm-hmm. the hell? What are they losing? How much time are they really losing? You know, and what, what, what kind of recruiting pitch is that, Dad? Man, oh, come play at our school. We're so great that we didn't even make the tournament, and you're watching all these other teams, but you should come play for us. Yeah, go I, ahead, you know me. what? A big thing that messes this up is though, and What's I think that? this is why we're seeing a lot of it happen. Transfer portal opens, I think, tomorrow. Yes, that's it. Oh. They did. They they picked the, the transfer portal to open up right, like right after the season. I heard it was Monday, which was yesterday. Oh, maybe it was, but it's just yeah, like it opens up before the tournament really starts. It's like, what do you like? That just seems ridiculous to me. It doesn't make any sense school wise. Like the semester is still going on. I think that's like mm-hmm. why football is how it is. They're like, oh well, you know, if you're going to transfer, unless they know a lot of players are going to leave them. You know, yeah, yeah. I think that's why a let lot your of walk ons, is... let your walk ons play a damn game for once. The games don't matter, mm-hmm. just let, let the kids play that don't get to play all year. I think it's dumb. And what I really think is crazy is like, I I still think you should show up no matter what, but I guess I can kind of understand the logic of like UNC last year and like Indiana, Syracuse, UCLA. Because those are like those are national, you know. Even if it's ancient history for Indiana, yeah. it's you know that's a that's a program that has national championship banners in the rafters. Yeah. Playing in the NIT is like, hey, we're better than that. Yeah. But you've got people, Saint Bonaventure. They, I feel like they, that's a team that should feel lucky that they got yeah. invited to yes. the NIT. I don't, I don't, I don't know what their history even is in the. Or yeah, St. John's. I know that Patino probably thinks he's above it, but St. John's is not above. Like you're I right, St. Bonaventure. Or- Who the hell? I mean, I'm like, and even Memphis. I think Memphis ought to be Florida State. Mm-hmm. Consider yourself like in Oregon State. Oregon State yeah. sucked this year, losing record. You're. you're well, ago, and then, to get invited. then you have Washington passing up on it, and it's like you honestly think when you go to the Big Ten, that you're going to have any chance at making the tournament. Yeah. Just, just anyway. Those are teams that are like, yeah, there's a few teams on that list. I still think no matter what, you should take yeah. the NIT invitation. But I can understand, like, if they said, hey, we're above it, like, they are. But there's a lot of teams, like, you're not. Like, I think on that short list, I didn't know that this is many teams uh, – Bowed out until just recently, but like, yeah, Memphis. It's like Oklahoma. college football. Just why do why even have bowl games anymore when they're letting everybody yeah. sit out the games and so, so just, sci-fi mommy. We sci-fi. We talked about that about what maybe they should do to because you know with these players uh, you skipping the bowl games and just kidding mm-hmm. out. What do you think? You know, what were some of the ideas we talked about? Uh, you talked about the, with that. Yeah, I was thinking like if you're. If you're going to decline the invitation to keep playing and to keep moving forward, and we were talking about the the portal, you don't get to enter the portal. I mean, that that just seems like easy out from, you know, a losing team where you should have loyalty and you should be trying to build the team, you know, up for next season. Um, what was the other thing we were talking? Oh yeah, we could take it over and run it more efficiently. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. I I feel like it's the biggest thing that is stupid that they. Um, stupid oh, we were talking they, about why they opened the portal so early. Oh before, yeah. Before before the season's even over. Yeah. Right. Why? 
like FSU, you result in FSU with 23 players out. Now, you under, can understand maybe with the NFL draft, but most of theirs were transfer portal people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But then again, you got the starting quarterback who was a like second string quarterback. He said, screw you guys, because the coaches were openly talking about this damn transfer portal, getting the quarterback DJ for, that had left Clemson and went to Oregon State for a year. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's, it's insane. I mean, you mm-hmm. can't blame. That's the hard part with it. When you understand the dirty side of sports being that you're in line to be the quarterback next year, but they've been going behind your back to bring, not just recruit a freshman out of high school. So they're like, you know, the unrestricted free agency with uh, around other colleges. It's like, you know, especially a guy that can't stay in one place for more than one year. Mm-hmm. And I, that that's what annoys me with this. You can't get loyalty to these programs anymore. We're your players and stuff. And they should have to sit out, you know, a whole year if they're going to transfer. If you're going to, we kind of talked about that just for the show is that, you know, have some punishment. If they say, okay, fine, I'm not, I'm not going to play the bowl game. They're going to sit out. Then guess what? You get to sit out, uh, you know, you sit out a whole year. Mm-hmm. Now the hard part is that people worry about, well, if they, what do they play and they get injured? Yeah, that's where some of this stuff comes in is like, you know, but I don't know. I think at the end of the day, it's a debate for another day we can have. Cause it's another huge ass issue that we've got. Mm-hmm. So uh, by mm-hmm. the way, Oregon state ended up 13 and 19 this year, five and 15 in the, at the bottom of the pac 12 in the last year of the pac 12. And they had the guts to turn it down a, uh, a, 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 a get yep. an invitation to anything. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's ridiculous. Mm. That's I think this is a big thing too. Like, this is why it's such a big mistake that the NIT pulled the automatic mid-major uh, qualifications because that's the biggest – I think that's who cares about the NIT because they know I mean, that that's something that means something to them. I know Baylor went to the NIT, and I was hopeful that they would win, and they lost in the craziest last-second shot. Um, but, you know, when they went to the NIT, was I paying attention? Yes but like not nearly as much as I would have if they were in the tournament because that's, yeah, it's like if you're one of those big teams, even again, I don't think they're above, like a lot of those teams are not above the NIT, but the point is a lot of those teams, their goal is March madness. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't, yeah, I feel like you should let these mid-major teams have their top, have their chance. And a lot of it too is, hey, we don't know how good these mid-major teams are because the NCAA always overlooks them. Why don't you give them a chance and let's see them play? Last year, North Texas beat a few people, and like, I think and that's, well, now they beat LSU. You know, they just beat yeah. LSU tonight. So and, like, and a lot of times, the bigger conferences are like, well, do we, do we, do we really want it or not? Whatever, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. I think it's like that. That's what we want to see. That's and more importantly, not necessarily what we want to see, but like, I don't think there's going to be a bunch of random people like watching the NIT suddenly. Mm -hmm. The people who are going to want to watch the NIT are the people who are fans of these schools. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get a lot more people watching, and more importantly, a lot more people selling tickets from these mid majors than, uh, than these other schools. Like I, I during 2021, I mean, COVID wasn't necessarily a thing, but things were limited and I was still trying to get p- tickets to like Baylor's national championship. If Baylor was in the NIT championship, I'm like, yeah, I think I'll just stream it or something, you know? <laughs> but if you're a, if you're an Indiana state, you should still be in the tournament, but I think you're on there, exactly. you know, but like, I'm sure I, they'll travel for mm-hmm. it. No. Go ahead. But another part of this to me is poor sportsmanship. Yeah, mm-hmm. you weren't good enough to make it to the big dance, but look, the smaller dance in the other gym is open. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. and and it I think it goes back to a generational thing also where a lot of people think they're entitled to things, even though they aren't up to par. And take the, you know, I grew up, I I grew up on Missouri State's campus. My parents worked there. My sister works there. I graduated from there. 
And when we got the invitation to the NIT or the WNIT, even though we didn't get to go to the big dance, we were still happy about it because, you know, you get to hang that banner in your arena for everybody to see if you if you won or if you participated. Um, it just it just seems like it's just poor sportsmanship to me. Yeah, agreed. And then it's even at school level. I mean, I the practical thing gets me is uh, you're talking about just a couple of days if you get eliminated first match and maybe a couple of weeks at most, you know, why you tell me you can't recruit and all that other stuff. I, I, maybe the, they're afraid of, the, and like Wupa said though, if you open the transport trans, transfer portal so early, maybe they're afraid that they, they, they know what's the mm-hmm. state of their roster is and players are going to just leave them and leave them with no rosters. Well, you know what? Damn it. You comp- competitors like to compete. You know, you go out there with the deck of walk-ons and uh, team managers, put the uniforms on, let them play a damn game for once. Mm-hmm. Even if you get crushed, play the damn game and let, let people get out there and have a chance. You're not winning a title. Just let the kids have these memories and a chance to do something. So, mm-hmm. so, so, all right. Well, um, are we got anything else with the NIT? It should be fun. We've had one upset tonight. Uh, tomorrow night we will have a second uh, the playing games, uh, Colorado, Boise State, Colorado, and what's the other game, Mupa? Uh, Montana State and Grambling Mont- State. Mont- yes, exactly. So Grambling State used to not be state. So, all right, we got the NIT going on. So, well, guys, it's still any not other- a state. They may not put the state there, but it's still not one. Any <laughs> other thoughts on the uh, the NCAA or the NIT before I I we rush through one? issue before we close. Nope. All right. I, I've said everything I've said besides free Indiana State. Seize the moment and keep playing. That's all I have to say. Well, we are, yes, seize the, seize the moment, keep on playing. I agree with you. Uh, before we, though, wrap up, I'm going to talk about this really, really quickly because we are over three hours. Did, yeah, we expected a long one tonight with this. Because of uh, you know all the you know so much to have to go through, but in breaking news that was happened today, the Univers- Clemson University files a lawsuit against the Atlantic Coast Conference over exorbitant exit fees. Folks, if you remember, howdy lemon pie, good to see you. Good to see hey, you. Lemon so, pie. Hey, hello. Good to see you, lemon pie. Um, to see uh, the, the debate about all the conferences realignments, we touched on it a second ago about how. Uh, California, Stanford have joined or joined the Atlantic Coast Conference going forward. Uh, part part of the discussions that we've had on several streams, teams like Clemson and the and Florida State University who blocked the original move, vote for expansion, the the scuttlebutt is that they're trying to get out of the conference, but there's this disagreement over the fees it pays take would take to get out of them, out of the league. Well, uh, now Clemson takes the first step in uh, filing a lawsuit. Will FSU jump in on this lawsuit because they've had law firms involved in the research and, and this issue for a while themselves. So that's, you know, this is an issue that's re- to remain to be seen how it plays out. So, and we say hello back to you, lemon pie, dad, man, JT, Wombie, Wupa, and hungry. Exactly. Howdy and lemon pie. Hmm. Howdy lemon pie. No. <laughs> Oh, and Zacharot's still here. Hey, Zacharot, you just quiet back there, but thanks for hanging, everybody. Make sure y'all hit that like button, folks. Uh, you know, like I said, the goal of this show, and I, I want to, before we close, uh, did y'all have any thoughts on this uh, this this article? Uh, it's one we will be hitting again down the road. So they're trying they're trying to change conferences. Is that what it's about? Clemson is like Florida State. The rumors have been circulating because they did not want to expand. They want to leave the conference. But to leave the conference, they're going to have to play, pay a super jackload mon- amount of money to get out of it. So oh, the suit okay. is over the amount of those fees to leave the conference. Uh, wow. the, the rumor, the reports before have been that FSU has had, it, it retained attorneys also looking into leaving the conference and those fees also. So it's... Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, Sorry. they're trying to say they say the amounts are unconscionable and unenforceable. So it's about keeping them in the conference when they want to in the scuttlebutt is clubs and FSU to the Southeastern Conference. You know, so that's that's kind of what the issue is, is mm-hmm. paying to get out of it. Any but like I said, any thoughts from any of y'all? Yeah, I mean, I think it's only a matter of time. There was already rumblings, and then uh, when Florida State got left out of the playoffs, I think it's like, yeah, they know it's time to go, you know? Because mm-hmm. if they're serious about competing, then you know, like, hey, the committee's not going to take you seriously if you're yeah. not in the Big Ten or the SEC. Mm-hmm. Yep, JT or Mommy, any other thoughts? You know, the, the Missouri Valley gets snubbed all the time, so it's nothing new here. I no. mean, the, the snubbing is, mon- you know, it's it's historical. It's It's been happening for a long time. I understand. JT, any thoughts? I pretty much would echo what Wupa said. Okay. Hmm. Um, yeah, all right. nothing additional to add there. Okay. But- well, we're at three hours, ten minutes, folks. Thank you for the wonderful time tonight. Thank you to Whoopa Troopa, AT Kurt, Sci-Fi Mombi. You that are here may have come in at the end. The purpose of this show, I you know, start off as Dad at Sports Weekly with Dad Man over a year ago. I read news stories, kind of you know, talk about some stuff here or there. Then occasionally Whoopa and maybe a few others would join me at times, you know, one person on. And you know, just decided we we're going to try to do something with come up with a panel format. Got these great people that have been on various shows with me. Whoopa Troopa, J.D. Kirk, and Sci-Fi Mombi, all are sports fans, bring their purview uh, perspectives into the thing. And so we're going to try going forward with a sports panel where we take different topics week by week. Uh, we hope to cover the UFL coming up. Uh, right now we're doing March Madness and things like that. Uh, you know, we're going to have the UFL. Uh, we'll maybe get into some hockey, especially as we reach the playoffs. Uh, Major League Baseball, and many other sports year-round. And we'll see how this goes. The, the crew may look different from week to week. Uh, people may not be able to be here. I may be busy, you know, but, you know, we're trying to get into a weekly format and really with some sports people. But, folks, don't be fear sports. We, we, we find ways to laugh about all kinds of other stuff. I mean, there's so much. If we did not have as much sports stuff to do tonight i would have definitely been talking about y'all's discussion out in the chat about um all the food in the restaurants tonight so all right with that being said but so please make uh, plans to join us we've got 15 likes i think from what i saw we got about 10 people watching us right now after three hours thank you so much um before i make some closing remarks i do want to go back to something uh let's see Thank you for this great German soccer league show. Yeah, we'll have to look. I will talk international football too if we need to. I don't mind. I mean, especially, you know, we're talking about how we can break up different responsibilities and look at the stuff. But hey, I'm, you know, I'm willing to talk in anything that we got. I even talked us uh, women's soccer once. But hey, I do want to take a moment and get a little bit serious though, folks. Um, and I going to bring these up only because it's in the public chat. Um, you know, our friend Masters Maniac Mexico is dealing with a lot. He's had some fundraisers and stuff for a lot of things. He's been a great support to this channel and especially to the missus in rolling out her Twitch and bringing a lot of people, a lot of supporters. Like I mentioned, if you go back and check that birthday stream of hers, the wonderful video that his friends over in the Europe did. But, you know, um, and like Master said, it, uh, he guessed it'll be our last show together for a while. We'll be in the Mrs. Chat tomorrow and then go to the hospital because he has uh, some major surgery coming up. And, um, you know, so you've uh, really, and he tells Congre to take care, keep heads up and keep the chat clean. If another maniac like him appears, block him. Uh, but Mr. Uh, and like Master said, who, uh, thank you guys. I played my cards, hands of the great creator where life will go. You know, if you pray, pray. If you, you know, thoughts, vibes, candle, whatever you do, keep miss, keep masters in your thoughts, prayers, and everything that you have do this day and age. Uh, 
Remember him. Be pray. We pray and always for a miracle and for full recovery. But pray that the surgery goes well tomorrow, and and just be have your thoughts and uh, continue well wishes to Masters uh, in the next few days as they come up. Um, and we are we appreciate all that you do, Masters, and and you're welcome because you've been a great part of our family. You've celebrated Thanksgiving and Christmas with us, and uh, we appreciate that. And New Year. And New Year, year, yes, and New Year too. Thank you, JT. So, all right. Uh, So, but hey, I do want to say that, and like Master, like Mr. Angel, absolutely. So, all right. Well, thank you, Masters. Uh, Thank you, JT, Wupa, and um, Sci Fi Mommy for being here tonight. We got 11 people still with us here at the end. So, uh, any last thoughts of you guys on the panel? Or I'm going to close it out because I might have another surprise in a minute. Uh, I I haven't been thinking this entire time, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Victory well, for uh, MSU. I'm pretty brain dead myself. Yeah. I know. Well, hey, uh, Master says that you can blow me out with a rant about those <laughs> European soccer league. So, yep. JT. Mm. All right. Well, let me do this so we can get out of here with these great people. Three hours. Wow. Who we knew it was going to go long, but wow. But, hey, join me tomorrow night for our Walking and Rambling podcast. We're back. Hang on our back, finally, to do our monthly podcast. And we have a special guest, Hungry Boy, who will be talking to us about Ghostbusters. So we're calling Ghostbusting and Rambling tomorrow night You know, at 9 p.m. Eastern. So join us for that uh, fun thing, uh, fun sh- show that we're going to have talking about the original Ghostbusters. Uh, go back and look at our chat the other day with Masters Maniac Mexico, where we talked about it, all things Ghostbusters, 2016 even, and Mar- with Martin D. with C with us. So make sure you catch us tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern. We appreciate you being here. Also, Friday night, Journey to Oasis. I cannot wait to see this because I've only heard great and glorious things about this thing and little blue guys. So who knows? Just be prepared for me, Daisy Blossom Hungry, and JT Kirk coming back on Friday night at 9 p.m. Uh, chill chats and stuff will happen randomly. Fortnite funs with Batman and friends will happen randomly, too. Sometimes the missus and I do. I've been playing mostly with her a lot lately, but you never know when we go live. Late night with Dad Man and friends, which we might have a special one of those in just a couple minutes. I don't know. I've got to check on things to make sure how I really feel, but make sure you follow me on Twitter. Uh, you get your notifications on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed and get notifications on YouTube. Follow us and get notifications on Twitch. I stream on X. Uh, well, not stream on X, but hey, follow me on Twitter at DadmanWalking55 or X. And so to get the latest for all the live updates for when I do go live. So, um, and you know, so we may do something special and Hungry's laughing. And yes, like Mr. Andrew said, may, may a Legion of Guardian Angels watch over you tomorrow. And the next day, Masters. All right. Well, with that said, with nine people still watching, three hours and 17 minutes gone down, um, <laughs> Masters. If you say 2016, I say Darth Maul. That's okay. That's okay. I love our Darth Maul com- com- combats. I appreciate it. So, and Master said, thank you so much. And you're a lovely person to yourself. And thank you. And thank you, panel. And we will catch you tomorrow night with uh, Ghostbusters with Aang and Hungry Boy. And we'll see what happens in a few minutes. We'll see how tired we are. Catch you later. Bye, all.